Welcome back, everyone. This is episode 85. Getting there. We're getting there. The Jiu-Jitsu Dummies podcast. <laughs> My name is Milton Campus. I'm a brown belt training out of South Florida. Behind the camera, we have Bo. What up, Bo? Bo. Miguel riding. Shotgun. Shotgun. <laughs> Shout out to Britt Tavar, our booking manager. She's What's putting up? our awesome uh, guest list together. So thank you, Britt. Uh, joining us today is sixth degree black belt, Richard Bressler who is Horian Gracie's first student in the USA. He is widely considered to be the first American student of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. Somebody's got to be uh, that guy. Yeah, he's also the uh, the author of Worth Defending, How Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Saved My Life. Uh, it's a story about his 40-year involvement with the Gracie family. All right, so stay tuned. Check it out. He is a, one of, he's a returning guest. Yeah. Yes, so, he is. All right. Uh, support for the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. The best in below the men's, below the waist, below the, below men's. the, men's, below the men's, the best in men's below the waist grooming. Uh, Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Uh, they recently launched the platinum package, right? This is the officially the pa- platinum package 4.0, which we're going to show some stuff during kind of mid episode. We got a box of a bunch of new goodies that they the sent tip us. Tip of the spear. Along with some of the other goodies we've gotten, this creates now we have like what people would get in the full platinum package. Yeah. All right. So um, join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer just for you 20% off and free worldwide shipping with code JJD20. Again, at manscaped.com. Free shipping, man. We are also sponsored by a company that has a special place in my heart, Black Belt Digital Marketing. I know those guys. Anything you need to build your website, web design, Google Ads, graphic design, SEO, anything digital, anything online, print, you know, we do that as well. I was talking about every door direct mail today, those mailers, those annoying mailers that we get in the mail. Yeah. We even do that. Uh, check us out on Instagram at Black Belt Digital Marketing. Or our, visit our website, and you can request a free online review, and it's bbdigitalmarketing.com. Man. All right, shout out to Neutral Zone. Fast becoming my uh, my go-to in CBD. recovery. I'm actually back to training. Hey. One, day, one day a week. One day a week. I, I, I hurt my, I'll hurt it again, and then it heals in yeah. a week, and then I can hurt it again. All right, so we'll, we'll get to Neutral Zone in a second. I actually went to... Back started going back to a chiropractor. All right. Um, so I, I had visited him once almost a year ago. Went back. Getting adjusted. He was. He, I told him about the pain. He's like, you know, let's let just come on in. We'll see what we can do. He's like, maybe it's your back. Maybe it's a muscle. We'll figure something out. Like a compensation. Yeah. Thing. He was. You know, hooked me up. Did, did does a great job. Does lots of uh, uh, just uh, it's Dr. Neil Sharf at pa- Parkland Chiropractic Bam, in Parkland, Florida. Free shout out. So. He, long story short, is I do all their therapy. I feel good. I'm always, something's always hurting, little headaches and neck and whatever. But he was like, okay, walk down the hallway, walk back to me, like kind of seeing, like kind of I was walking. Checking you out. And I stopped midway and I stretch and I'm like, and I put my hand right where it is. He Mm -hmm. goes, Hmm. do that again. And I did it. And he goes, come here. He goes, I think I know what it, he think, I think I might know what it is. And he says, I didn't realize like your pelvis, right? The pelvis bone, the pelvic yeah. bone, yeah, yeah. right? It's really two pieces, right? Yeah. Well, well, it's, yeah, it's, it's one, it's one it's, piece, but it's no, like it's two, yeah, oh, no, no, yeah, you're no, right. it's two, two yeah, halves. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a ligament the middle, there, right? There's a ligament. He goes, yeah. you may have like the bone. I think he's the way shifted? he said it might have kind of shifted out from like yeah. the ligament, like kind of maybe gone forward a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And that's you're feeling that pain somehow. Man, he started. He was like. I won't say what we had to, like, hey, move this guy you. over and let me, you know, like he started like pushing down and putting his fingers in my gut. And he used my the, like, the, you know, the, 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 yeah, he was like sticking his fingers like almost under my ribs. And, oh, like, wow. Yeah, it was kind of, it was crazy. A couple of days, it, I was, next day felt the same. A couple of days later for the first time, I felt like the pain went away a little bit. Gotcha. And I was like, oh, let me train. Significant and I went to train. I was able to move more, but I still, yeah. because of... The motions, yeah, kind of hurt myself. And you still I, I hurt it a little bit. I strain it. Yes. For now, I figure I can strain it. I'll see him on Friday. Go back to the Man. next Tuesday. See if I could do that until I'm 100. percent And I'm like pretty much just rolling with like white and blue, which I, I don't know if that's a mistake because they're just crazier than than the higher belts. You should, but roll, you roll, should roll, roll rolling with with lower belts. Yeah. 
I, and, I, and I bring it up when I'm talking about neutral zone because then I am using I, I'm using this roll on right the now. roll on actually did I, I actually think I have it in my bag I'm using the roll on I take the tincture in the morning and at night um, and I've also used the balm. I don't think yeah. we, we don't have one here. There's a bomb, like a massage yeah. bomb. I got it. And it's like it's really thick, so it stays longer than yeah, it than does. This, right? So you're finding this your is neutral more zone, like a little bit more like I would compare it to like an icy hot feel. Yeah. But then the bomb st- just you know it's really thick. It's like a yeah, I use it. I don't know if you would call that a salve. Do you kind of is that a salve? Is that different? Kind of yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just I thicker. It stays longer. Yeah. Like when I wake up in the morning, it's still there. Yeah, it's like, like Vicks. It's it. like Vicks vapor rub. Yeah, like a thicker. Yeah, but it comes in like a big like a roll on. It almost looks like it's. Mm-hmm. Don't put it on your under. <laughs> yeah, it, looks, it almost looked like it would be for like it, a it looks like like, a, like the old school deodorant. Yeah, yeah so those are those. The, those are the three things that I'm using right now. So when I when I'm talking about neutral zone, it's like a glue stick. I'm actually using it. Yeah, it almost yeah. yeah right? it's like I, a I did glue it the first stick. time. Yeah, you know, got to use my manscape, but okay. it was you know had a little Hard hair there, and I got it. it's in the hairs, yeah. and I was like twenty percent off, twenty five percent off. So shout out to Neutral Zone. I'm actually using the products. They are helping me. I feel better. Uh, I definitely get better night's sleep, especially when I'm when I use the uh, the, nighttime. Uh, the nighttime CBD, the, uh, the with tincture. the melatonin. Yeah. Uh, so listen, no matter if your aches and pains come from lifting weights at the gym, rolling on the mats, or just the daily grind of life, which is the one that gets me the, the most yeah. sitting, working that during grind, the day, baby. Neutral Zone has a product for you. Find your Neutral Zone by finding the best product for your pain wellness so you can continue your active lifestyle. Check them out at NeutralZoneCBD.com. Use code JJD for 25% off. 25. And check them out on Instagram at my Neutral Zone. Yeah. All right. As always, Sean over at Flow and Roll, hands down the best custom gi and no gi gear in the business. Holler. Don't believe us? Visit them on Instagram at Flow and Roll, Flow underscore and underscore Roll, and check out all of their custom designs they've created for academies across the country. Uh, they're even doing wrestling singlets. Uh, you know, they you can get T-shirt orders. They do keychains, any type of swag, lanyards for events. They do it all. That's right. uh, our podcast. I'm not going to get into it, but we, our our piece of jujitsu rash guard is is moving forward. Uh, hopefully, we'll have the final soon. And uh, listen, go check them out again on Instagram <laughs> at flow underscore n underscore roll. Yeah. Or the website flowandroll.com. Again, you use code JJD for twenty percent off. That's you know twenty percent off online orders. Yeah. Not if you're ordering keys for yeah. your for your gym and your uh, or your your uh, your no geek kits. It's not for that. But he's got an awesome, um, like kind of a pre-order program, we'll call it. Yeah. So if you are a gym owner, if you are a coach, you're looking to put together a new gi or a, a no gi set. Slide up and give him DMs. a call. Give him a yeah. Give him a shout out. Give him a shout out on Instagram. Let him know the dummy sent you, and talk to him about how he can make it affordable to get you everything you need for your gym without sacrificing I, any quality. I really hate it's this. It's really thing. a really cool program. So. Help me help you. Yes. Yeah. I mean, literally, like, it's a couple of hundred dollars that you would lay out, and you'd basically be selling your products on the website to your students. You still make what you would make from, like, if you sell your geese for $150, you are selling your geese for $150, you are still making your profit. You just don't have to lay out the money to wait till they come in-house to do it. Have inventory. Yeah, he's gonna. You'll you can still order your inventory, but he's gonna put your inventory together with pre-orders that your students made. They're going to get a really cool bag with their gi, with can their no gi stuff, maybe bam? a couple extras. Even we've thrown in keychains from the jump, from the jujitsu dummies in there. That's right, stickers. There are some really cool things that he does, and your students are going to get even more than you would be doing by giving it to them there, you know, and the academy. But you're able to get what you need with very little cash outlay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you to the BJJ box. Jiu-Jitsu's favorite monthly subscription box is delivered to your door filled with premium jiu-jitsu and grappling apparel. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've already eaten some of what's in that. that we're going to unbox eaten, later. We, we were eating grappling <laughs> apparel. We got hungry. We <laughs> ate some of the uh, some uh, of the uh, but we uh, were, the snacks. No, we were reviewing so, the products. We were reviewing the products. Yeah, that's, that's what, what we we'll doing. say. So uh, again, delivered to your front door, filled with premium jiu-jitsu and grappling apparel, equipment, supplements, supplies, snacks, mm-hmm. and more. Uh, they find the best products in the world of jiu-jitsu and guarantee every box to be worth more than the cost. I'm wearing one of the t-shirts right now. I am. T-shirt. You, yeah, I like it. it. I like the color, actually. Yeah, but it says, I'm yeah, allowed to say stuff, for Milton. Six-minute rounds. Jiu-jitsu soap after. Yes. Okay, so uh, you get 
uh, we we have the VIP box. Is so that- we get. He sends us two T-shirts, but the typical uh, VIP box has one T-shirt. And again, up between four and seven other items. Is that one six-minute round, and then you clean yourself, or is it six one-minute rounds? I don't know, but do you see the shaka? We yeah, have of course. that element in the in the podcast. We're not yeah. copying, but we have that. I mean, you it's know, it's a pretty element. synonymous. No, but the the skeleton finger. Yeah, I do. Come on, man! Skull and bones and jujitsu. Yeah, right. They go hand in hand. Yeah, we're like grappling. Pirates. Okay. Use code JJD10 for ten dollars off your first order at the B at the bjjbox.com yeah all right and we're going to be unboxing later so we've got some more stuff coming from uh, from the bjj box okay. <laughs> now uh, the last thing i'm going to say before we bring out the guest uh, before we bring out professor bressler is if you do buy anything from any of our sponsors and you use a coupon code yep. it's almost always jjd and then either JD jjd 10, or 10 20. or 20 right um, you can always go check out our Instagram, and it has them all laid out on our bio. If you buy something from one of our sponsors, send us a copy of the receipt. We'll usually confirm the purchase with the provider, with the with the sponsor. Yep. And we're going to enter you into a giveaway of up to $250 worth of jujitsu swag. Right, it's right, going right. to be podcast gear, probably some stuff from Flow and Roll, and maybe we'll even I gotta, I gotta get say, some uh, CBD in there. i got to say one thing. Uh, Sean on Flow and Roll is selling those um, Queen of Hearts. Uh, gear, yeah. At, well, I had a I had a guest reach out to me. Yeah, they're like the promo code doesn't work, and I reached yeah. out to Sean. I just want to let everybody know that that he's doing that for somebody else. So the promo yeah. code doesn't work on that stuff. Yeah. Just to let you guys know, I had uh, somebody reach out to me yeah. and ask. And I, I actually wound up letting that person opt in. Uh, I think it's the same person. I think it's the same person that asked the question. Was okay. it a female? Yeah. Okay. So she sent the uh, she sent us the receipt. She said, "Let me know if this does this work." I spoke to Sean. He goes, like, he looked at the order. He goes, they actually tried to put it in. Um, oh, it she is, showed me the screenshot yeah, with yeah. that too. Yeah. So I messaged her and I told her, you know, let me look into it. And then I told her, like, hey, yeah, we're going to include you. So no worries. The the Welcome Queen of Conference. Hearts is for it's a I, I don't remember the Instagram. I think it's like uh, Queen of Hearts underscore F and R or something like that. I don't remember. And it's for a gym that he works with. They're they're basically starting That's a the female name the, line. Is that the name of the gym? No. That's a dope name. No. But it is a female line of jujitsu apparel, rash guards, and, and I'm not sure what it, the, the totality of what he's going to offer. They chose a good guy, but to do he's it. They, he is creating the gear. He's doing what he does for this company, and he's attaching his name to it. Um, obviously, he's very popular, and it's his gear, but it's kind of like their brand, so they're essentially partnering it. on it. Yeah, yeah it's a co-op. Uh, so yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's not typically like, don't if you go there, like you know, we might not be able to accept every entry from there. But can check it out, and we'll start talking about it. I actually talked to him about it yesterday. I just so wanted we'll to clear it up, you know. People, absolutely, people absolutely. I'm out. glad you brought it up. It's crazy. No, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm just, not used, I'm to, I'm not used to, to it. I'm happy to see that they placed an order, and he sees that he's getting I gotta, I gotta those rant. online orders from from us as well, as screenshot. well as the gyms that reach out to him. Yeah. So I got a yo when I was like yeah. yo. <laughs> um. All right. Anything else? You got anything? Let's get into yeah, it. Yeah. Let's get you this ready? thing started. You ready, yeah, bro? I'm excited. Yeah. All right. Let's get Professor Bressler. In here. Professor. (laughs) It's Professor. Hey, welcome, Professor Bressler. How are you? I'm great. How are you guys? I'm doing good. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. I don't say that too often, but welcome back. Two points. Thank you. (laughs) You've met Miguel. Yep, yep, yep. Miguel. Miguel is my trusty sidekick. What a Friday shotgun. He's the uh, he's the McMahon to my Carson. Wow. No. Is that, yeah, is okay. that an insult? Or is that... what, can I be the pallbearer to your undertaker? Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> okay. McMahon to your Carson. Man, that, that's going back. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. going to be 49 I'm not, in a week. I'm, I'm not that old. I'm not that old. So when he said McMahon, I was like, yes, a WWF reference, like wrestling. <laughs> See, he even called it WWF. I, you know, yeah. Oh, it, or I WWE. Those days. Sorry, Wild Wildlife Federation. Yeah. <laughs> Wildlife Federation. Wild yeah, I don't world. want the panda coming after me. <laughs> so, Professor, thank you for reaching out. I know that uh, you know we uh, we had a specific topic. We, we won't just stick to that topic today, but we'll certainly uh, we're, we're going to talk about it. But you did reach out to me. Do you want to tell me a little bit what was uh, what was the reasoning behind uh, you reaching out and, and coming back on the show? Well, since my book was released. That this is when you're supposed to hold it up. You said, when my book, <laughs> <Since> my book <laughs> was defending. released, 
worth defending on Amazon that has over 200 five-star reviews. That's a lot. Nice. Black belts in particular have been reaching out to me and quite a few people thanking me for writing the book, talking about specific things, talking about how we're, how jujitsu is heading in a different direction um, for the most part. And it's kind of a sport aspect. And, uh, and, and, and I don't think this would have ever really come to my attention as much as it has now because of people reaching out to me, thanking me for writing the book and like, and contacting me because I really thought for a while I was, what I was doing was irrelevant in jujitsu because I wasn't in contact with very many people because, you know, because of how sportive and all the fancy guards and the stuff that they're doing now, I thought, gosh, man, everybody's like leaving me in the dust and they're doing this stuff. And I just, and then I realized so the people contacting me is, and, and like I said, black belts that have said, man, Richard, we have to stick to the roots and the foundation and the fundamentals. And I've watched other seminars and they're, they're being taught with where the guy has to be very fit, strong, and fast to make all these things work. And that's not the jujitsu that I learned. Matter of fact, that was the prerequisite of Morian saying, you don't have to be strong, fast, you know, or fit. And that's what attracted me to it. I'm going to like, I, I didn't believe it at first, you know, just because I always thought that big buff guy, but you know, it, nevertheless, I still kept doing it. And I, and I saw what he was doing with the challenges and, and with the what we were seeing when we would go to different schools back in the early days. And then he told me what would happen. You know, he had, you know, insight and he said, Americans are going to take it, you know, with the time they spend in the gym and all this stuff and how they get fit. They're going to be spending hours, which has happened. And then and then the innovative things that just happen when this many people get onto something, but I've seen a lot of the guys that are, I mean, I don't have to mention names, but all you got to do is look at their bodies and you know, these guys are not natural. Oh well, yeah. And it's, what do they call that? Uh, they call uh, that acai, 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 acai and Jesus. And Jesus. <laughs> yeah. That's the code. He actually taught me that. I, I never knew that. Yeah. That's the code or, for, well, in you know, Portuguese, bombao. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I never knew. I never knew that's what they called it. I, I, I've heard you say it before. And yeah. then I didn't make it up. Know, I didn't know it was a thing, but, <laughs> yeah. but go on. But we, yeah, we agree with you. Yeah. There's a lot of so, that. I made a comment about it because of the, the, the announcement recently from my BJJF with, I don't, their both name is Penna. So like Alejandro Penna got, uh, he got he popped hot on a random test. Oh really? When he got first place, uh, heavyweights world or absolute world, whatever it was, and then Felipe Pena ended up having it because he got second place. So, so they he took wins. it away from yeah. this Pena and gave surprise, it to surprise, Pena. surprise. The steroids and he's the guy who's supposed too. to fight Gordon Ryan, I think, next month or two months from now. Oh, that yeah. ten thousand dollars versus yeah fifty thousand yeah. dollar fight or whatever it is, hundred thousand dollar fight. But yeah, I, I get, we agree with you. Yeah, We're, we agree. It's a problem, there's a lot out there. Sure. It's a lot out there. But go on. Yeah, and and also the amount of people that are doing jujitsu now, and the injuries that I've heard about that I, I you know, I want. I'm since I'm close to Torrance Grace University, I go in and visit about once every two weeks, help out teaching, walk around, um, and and people are coming in from all over the place, and I'm always hearing about. They stopped doing jujitsu. They were in another affiliation and, you know, people that were in their forties and fifties and they got hurt and they said, you know, this jujitsu is not for us. And then they found a, a, an affiliate of Torrance, a CTC certified training center. And they got back into it. They decided to take a class and they went, wow. We don't have to do this 
competitive type of thing and we can you know we can do it in a controlled environment because the masses aren't going to be it'd be like how many people in high school or college are in competitive wrestling not very many very small, it takes a very yeah. special fit kind of person to do that and and not to mention the injuries so yeah. I'm not dissing that. I, I, I don't, I'm not here to say, you know, only this kind of jujitsu. I'm saying that learn the fundamentals, learn the foundation and do something that will help you because you might be that athlete that if he goes out in the street is such at the top of his game. If he got into a fight, you wouldn't have a problem. But what about his wife, his daughter, his sons? whatever his friends, unless he's at the top of his game, if they're doing a lot of the fancy stuff, they're going to get destroyed. Yeah. And that's the, and that's what, you know, whatever you do in your, when you're training on a regular basis is probably what you're going to do in real life. Yeah. And so I'm just saying, learn, learn it all. Don't get stuck in one thing. And, you know, it's, we had a guest on recently. Um, Nick Salas. I was going to mention that. Um, he was uh, a brown belt on our uh, instructor Marcello. at Marcelo Garcia's in New York City. Um, during the pandemic, he opened up his own gym with a with a friend. They're black. They're black belts now. Yep. He talked about being very honest with his students, and I took to his message because this is the way that I talk to people about jujitsu. I don't own a gym. But when people ask me about jujitsu, I usually ask them, well, what are you looking to get out of it? And based on that, I will tell them, you know, if they're in my area, I might tell them you should go to this gym. You know, you're looking to compete. You should be at this gym. Are you looking for self-defense? You probably, you know, want to find a a gym like this. Um, I've had people, you know, that talk about kids with bullying. I say, you know what? Find a, a a Gracie, you know, uh, was it? What's the bullying Grace, program? Gracie Baja. No, no, no. Oh, the, the no, the the Gracie University. Oh, the Gracie uh, University. Gracie, yeah, you yeah. know, Gracie Jiu Jitsu has the, uh, the bully bullyproof program, program, right? I don't know if they still have it. I, I know they did. They do. I'll yeah. tell them like there, and I know that we. I've looked up. I've looked it up online, and there weren't any like certified training centers down here. I guess for that specifically, but I will tell them like find a really good kids program where they talk about bullying, where they teach them about bullying, where they tell them to use their voice first and get help and then then you might have to use your hands and then you might have to get physical um but nick was very honest is very honest with his students that come through the door that look we are selling the game of jujitsu we are selling sport jujitsu he had a woman they said that they spoke to that Mm -hmm. said she was recently attacked and she was looking for self-defense it's like this is probably you know we're doing you know barambolos today you know in practice this is probably not what you're looking for. And that honesty was refreshing because I know most gyms are going to say, just come on in, come on in. They put you on the mat. Hopefully you take to it and you stay regardless of why you got there and why, why you, what you were looking for from jujitsu. Uh, but, you know, he was very honest. It's a good example of somebody that's really trying to make sure I'd rather have somebody come in for the right reasons and stay with me for a really long time then come in thinking that this is karate because right everybody thinks it's karate if they don't know about martial arts i'd rather somebody come in and stay than come in take a couple classes and go yeah this isn't what i'm looking for this isn't for me when are we putting on the gloves when are we going to be striking when are we going to do some boxing and that and then you know i i know plenty of gyms that it says you know kickbox martial arts kickboxing self defense wrestling jiu jitsu and it's just a jiu jitsu gym so i mean that happens they got some pads but, in there. Yeah. <laughs> they have some grappling dummies yeah. and you can punch them, I guess. But it, it was refreshing and I, I, I respected his honesty about, you know, both sides of jujitsu. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not a place for in more an MMA style of jujitsu, right? There's a place for old farts like me. I'm there for well, the self-defense, the exercise, and the, and, you know, I say so I don't go crazy. Right, the mental side of what it gives me. Um, so that's why I'm there. I wouldn't be at a really like a heavy competition gym where they're constantly preparing for the next worlds, for the next IBJJF, the pans, of this, that, because I'm just gonna get hurt there. For sure. You know, yeah. I want to be in a place oh, oh. where other people are are, are like minded. 
old old farts like you is that what you <laughs> say? yes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, listen I, i'm almost at a half century i think i call myself an old fart i'm trying to do like my dad my dad always told everybody that he was a little bit older than he actually was so that he'd get the compliment of like wow you yeah. look good for 75 <laughs> you know for 80 whatever yeah. he's 77 now he still does that i was gonna say like the gracie family did almost too good of a job spreading the word of jujitsu because now we have that what you just mentioned there's all the it's different a, types well of it's a viable career now like yeah. it's a hard road but it's a road you could take and we all know how much we love jujitsu so imagine learning that that's what you want to do as a kid and if you want to make money at jujitsu you, you gotta throw that away now. that gi yeah and you gotta do no gi because that's where the money's at you gotta do ebi you know you have to do all the cross promotions hopefully right. make it to one championship so you could yeah. maybe win a fifty thousand dollar bonus yeah. or make it to adcc where i don't know you get paid in bitcoin or something now <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. but but professor like you know you say uh, the black belts were coming to you people that read the book can you elaborate a little bit more on what they were saying well i'll tell you one of the other things as you guys were talking i was thinking about <clears throat> the things that i've been hearing about um there is a guy who read my book about maybe three months ago and he contacted me through Instagram and he said, I really, you know, I read your book in two days. I loved it. I'd love to interview for an article that I'm doing in some magazine in LA. So I said, well, great. I'm, I said, where are you located? He said, Santa Monica. I said, really? Perfect. I said, me too. I go, whereabouts? He goes, I'm on four street. I said, I'm on 4th Street, you know, <laughs> it, you know, and all of a sudden I hear this in my front door. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> anyways, you had me. I was like, well, how did he get there? <laughs> anyways, so we met and and he's about five years younger than me. Um, youngster. Yeah, youngster. He's in, in his mid 60s. And he goes, we, we start talking. And one of the things that I has been a recurring theme over and over, and look, I'm not here to do a commercial for Grace University or their certified training centers. It's just that they're the closest to thing that what I am personally doing and how I was taught. And, and what I'm talking about was because he came over and shot some pictures for me, did a thing for my website richardbresser.com forward slash mag, you know, did a jujitsu magazine for me and shot some pictures and he saw me teach the class. And he's been a student for about six months in another gym around here. And plus what I've seen from people coming in who have been doing jujitsu, who to me, if you've been in jujitsu for about six months and you don't know the Americana, the Kimura, the collar choke, the rear naked choke. Something's wrong. To me, those are the core beginning kind of submissions that you that you learn. And I've seen that these guys, because they don't have a beginning curriculum, they have guys come in and, and let their students, the other students, start to teach the beginners to try to get them caught up and mm. and part of the problem is if you have blue belts or even a purple belt that's not really a good teacher showing one of the things that the enthusiasm that they have for jujitsu which i'm not knocking is they want to show them everything they know and it overwhelms. And I remember the thing, and I think it might be in my book. It said, if you want them to learn nothing, show them everything. Mm. And it's we can only absorb a certain amount of information. But people's enthusiasm, and that's what I see in seminars, teachers come in and they're not really good teachers, but they know a lot of moves. And they go, well, you can do this. I went and saw a seminar the last 15 minutes. This guy went through easily a half a dozen moves. And one of my students was there. It was a purple belt. I called him after the seminar. I called him at nice and say, how'd you like the seminar? And he said, 95% of it I won't use. 
And the other 5%, I forgot. <laughs> wow. Because there was so much information. And unless you're doing it on a regular basis and drilling those kind of moves, it, it becomes useless. And so I, I really wish that more people would have some kind of a beginning curriculum, but it seems like no one does. Like even said, even no if they does. even if they want to be a competition school, they should have that that beginning that that's right. one hundred and one. It doesn't matter where what offshoot your students are gonna, you know, kind of follow. Whether it's sport, whether it's self defense, whether it's the MMA route, they need, you know, again the one hundred and one version of jujitsu. Right, and, and and I, I think, and, and even from the. That the Gracie family members on Elio's side, one of the things that most people would agree on is that Horian's probably the best teacher in the family. I mean, he he is when it comes to teaching, the guy really knows. And he was my my personal, you know, private teacher for about 10 years. Plus, I went through the instructor program. I was the first one to go through it. Me and three other guys went through it. So I, I learned the style of teaching that he does. And that's what I, I patterned myself after. But I thought everyone, I thought if they had a black belt, they were just learning jujitsu. But in Hori would say, no, it's not like that. But I thought he was just kind of saying, Rich, you know, just kind of putting everyone else down to build himself up. Back then, that's what I thought. Now I realize that he knew something that I didn't. And so, you know, it's the kind of teaching, it's what you're teaching. And, you know, and then all, like I said, give them the foundation. If they want to, if they want to go into competition, great, go, but you'll have something to build on. Yeah. You know, you, you made me think of a guest. Uh, I, I looked it up. So you were, when you were talking, I wasn't being disrespectful here emailing my wife i was looking for i always forget his last name i know his nickname is spider ninja but i always forget his his last name so it's mike spider ninja bidwell he's well known for his bjj after 40 page on i think he's his biggest following is on besides yeah. youtube is on facebook um and he when we had him on he talked about and i believe it's for this reason that you're talking about he only starts students at a very set time of the month. So it's like, if you're starting, you are all of my new students will start on this day of the month. And I believe it's only like every couple of months that he'll do that. Essentially accepting new students to, yeah, like, to come into right. the program. Yeah. And I believe like it basic, is because of that. So like that they're training. all starting at the same place. Yes. Yeah, so you're getting the basics. Everybody's starting at the same time. Everybody's learning. If you want to go to his gym, I believe, I'm sure that he has higher belts that come in and out of the gym, but if you're starting in this program, if I'm not mistaken, it was like one day wow. a month or one day every couple of months that you would be able to go in. So, you know, there are people out there that agree with you and are yeah. and, and would do it that way. Um, My gym also has a beginner's program and it's two set date. It's not like that. That's pretty smart to build a batch. So yeah. that way there's also some cohesion because I'm yeah. sure if more people go through it together, then it'll build more of a bond and that's probably yeah. good for business. But, um, uh, we have beginning classes and I mean, I am a beginner, right? In terms of like, you think about a seventh degree black belt. I'm a boob. Six. Six. <laughs> Congratulations in advance. <laughs> and, and, uh, I, I'll, sometimes the only time I have to go is a beginner's class. Yeah. And I like it. I love, I, I love it. I love the 101. It, it, yeah. It's, a, it's a, a great reminder. It's like rereading a book that you like. Yeah. It's like, I already know what I know about but this I book, forgot about but I forgot books. about this and I didn't view that chapter, how I viewed it back when yeah. I first read it. Like professor, I say this a lot. Uh, my favorite part of jujitsu and not just because of my age. Now from the beginning, I was helping my instructor. I was teaching as a white belt because I was his first white belt. I was his first real student. Uh, he had one female that was a friend of his wife that was there for like two classes and never came back. But he had opened up his gym. He was a family friend through my, my wife's family. I met him and I, I was his like, I was his right hand man. I would go and sometimes it was just us for two hours. So I wound up getting my blue belt in six months. I was there 
two hours a day, six days a week. I trained like crazy. I asked him if I can Sometimes compete. you opened it. I golded. I did gold uh, on my first event, double gold. And it, I earned that that blue belt in, in a much faster time, especially, again, because people... And I was, and again, I was teaching at White Belt. I was running kids' classes. I, w- I was helping him. I said this on the last podcast. I feel that my technical jujitsu, that, that my technique especially in the basics was better then than it is now because we did have a begin. The first hour was a beginner's class and we did beginner stuff. You know, we would, we would swim, you know, you know, you swim, you know, when you, yeah. when you swim, we, we did all the basics. We would do sprawls and we would, you know, swim and we do sweeps. That was the whole class. And then we got like 10 minutes of rolling in. And then the next class, the advanced class, if you stuck around then we pretty much just stretched and then went, you know, anybody yeah. that if they weren't, there for the first class stretch and we would just pretty much roll for that whole second what he would call an advanced class but i feel like my jujitsu when i think back i'm like wow i was so much better at these sweeps back then than i am now because i did them all the time i had an hour to do them every single day six days a week and i just don't do that now but putting the reps putting the reps yeah i mean i I know a lot of gyms don't have a beginner's class it is just kind of throw them in and uh, again i was saying one of my favorite things to do is teach I love, like, give me the new white belt, especially if he's a bigger guy. Give me the new white belt. Coach knows that he, he, my coach has a joke. He says, look, Milt, this is what I, I uh, uh, Amazon Prime just came in for you today because he'll give me, like, the really big guys. And, again, I love going through, like, everybody else can, we'll do the move of the day with everybody, but then when we're going to roll, I'll kind of take them to the side and, and okay, look, let's get into my guard. Let me show you kind of just a little bit of guard passing. I'll go in your guard. You'll be in my guard and so on. But I love that. That's my favorite part of jujitsu is teaching and showing other people and, and seeing somebody use a move that you showed them. That's, that's fulfilling. I, I like that part. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good way to oh, Yeah. That. I mean, nothing, nothing feels better than when I show a move and the guy will be sparring a little bit. And then all of a sudden they'll come up to me after they're sparring. They go, Richard, what you showed me really worked. Yeah. And yeah. I want, I, I tried to throw, show you the shit today, but you know, I guess, I mean, I, I you were really lucky because that's never supposed to work. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, yeah. of course, it, yeah. you know, so it's like, and, and I love, I love those details. I, I love sh- like, especially if I'm rolling with somebody and they do something, I'm like, you know, if you would have just put your hand here yeah, and like you give them that little the, tiny key that they're like, oh, wow, it never works. For you me. know and what? Now, this, oh, wow. Oh, that guy now it works all the time. To, to me, I feel like the secret sauce that a lot of people don't talk about is you can be really good at a move, but you also have to know the second part of the move, which is when to use it. So it's like you're not gonna crank on a Kimura, you know, from the back, or yeah, like, some weird like that. You know, like yeah, you're using a spatula as a hammer. Yeah. Um, it's it's I, I believe it's a combination of being taught also, which I feel a lot of coaches, at least that I've seen uh, lately in my small career, um, they're really starting to explain concepts. And like how the body works, and then based off of that, then you learn how how the body should be positioned in order in order for you to take advantage of of that move, and gotcha. then and then and then it's learning the transitions. That's way more advanced, but still, like not only knowing like oh I only know a kimura and a choke, and I should know when I should do a choke and when I should do a kimura. Yeah. Right, that's the of other. Of course, yeah. Professor, I have I have a question. You, you kind of started. You said a little something before, and I thought you were going to go down a certain road. When you kind of say the new, like uh, these new moves that they're doing or this like fancy stuff, like I, I don't forget, I, I'm not quoting you, but you know, that, that I, I think most people's minds go to the leg stuff, the, all this new leg. Is that, is that what you were talking about? No, or were you I'm just talking, talking about, about the, anything like guys going in? Different kinds of and, guards. Yeah. The different kinds of guards. Like squid and. You know, which, and you know, and I honestly, I haven't really kept up with them because, you know, if it's not a good guard for self-defense, it's like, I, you know, don't do squid guard. (laughs) It's the worst one. Don't even know what it is. It's when you lap, you, you pull out their lapel and then you stick your foot in, in the lapel through it. And then you'll pass the lapel underneath 
your leg, so it's trapping. You already lost me. I pass it under. Yeah, your leg. I'm, not, I'm ready. I'm not. I'm not going to do that. You know, but I'm what I'm saying ne- is, like, if if he, for me, I'm just never. If, going if to you're, do that. if you're like, let's say, walking around the lake in Michigan and happen to get in a grappling fight during fall when somebody's wearing a jacket, <laughs> you're, not, parka, you're not, you're not, you're not going to pull guard, yeah. unzip their jacket, and then yeah. do lapel guard because then the guy's just going to yeah. yank up. That's on a it sport. That's a on, sport. Yeah. Jiu-jitsu move. Very specific and, you know, set of and things. And again, I'm, to go I'm, down, I'm, I think just like like <laughs> Professor Bressel is saying is, I'm not hating on it. It's just not for me. So why I'm, I'm not going to hang out over there? <laughs> did, did you also? I, I've look. I've watched people do moves, and I'm like, yeah, I'm just. I'm never going to do that. Right. My back isn't going to let me do not that. My me. body doesn't bend that way, and I know that's just going to wind up leading to me. Yeah. So I'd rather do you know be over here, do the basics. Yeah. You know, do that move ten thousand times. Right. What do they say? Ten thousand times. Yeah. You hit them. Right? You hit them with the sharks. Just keep on you know hitting them with the with the things that I like and that I you know that float my boat. Yeah. And again, the things that I just think work for my body. It's not everything. Um, you know? I have a question. What do you think about, I mean, not what do you think about, uh, did you also uh, come up learning these very basic self-defense moves in Nogi as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, during the summer months, you know, because we were in the garage, you know, and some of the summer months, you know, can get pretty hot. You know, one of the things that we did for, you know, maybe two or three months out of the year when we had class, we would come in and just wear gi pants. We wouldn't wear shirts. So, you know, so when it was hot and sweaty, and you're talking about not wearing a shirt or a rack, well, there weren't rash guards. No. And, you know, trying to do a submission after you're rolling with somebody for, 30 seconds to a minute, you, you just slip and slide out, out of everything. Remember, back then, there was no such thing as one of your sponsors, manscaping. Yeah. But, <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, right? we, we had, you know, hairy chests and, I mean, you know, just bigger guys. You, just, <laughs> you know, you get in a north-south position and someone would drop their sweat. Oh, in. Bo's fantasy over here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so, hoping. I'm so heavy we did, breathing. <laughs> We did no key <laughs> stuff and, and, and we always started the class with self-defense. And then we had a certain amount of classes where you do like, just like punch blocks, you know, just to deal with stuff in the street. Green light, red light. Um, that's what they do. You're in the green zone or you're in the red zone. And when you're in the red zone, you got to close the distance. I think that's like a great well, combative. Yeah, thing. That stuff. We were before the, you know, we we didn't call it that, yeah, man, but I understand what you're yeah. talking about. But because, like like I'm saying, most of it was private. So, you know, we, we just realized that, you know, when you're close enough, you know, when you're super close, you can't do a lot of damage. And when right. you're far enough, you can't do a lot of damage. So that would be your, you know, your analogy of red light, green light. Man, you Cue it. the dramatic music. It's actually pretty good. $110. Gentlemen. Free shipping. All men strive for gold in their life, right? Yeah. Gold medals, gold watches, gold everything. I like platinum too. However, there is a certain type of man who goes the extra mile. He walks with the confidence of an eagle and giggles in the face of danger. Khabib? He's a big, hairless, winning machine. And when he unzips his pants and... and, uh, What? (laughs) When, When he unzips his pants, he sees... Platinum. Platinum. That's right. Manscaped would like to introduce you to their best and biggest ultimate hygiene bundle, the Platinum Package 4.0. Cut to the website. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> How convenient. Manscaped is a leader in below-the-waist grooming. Now trust them with the whole shebang. Join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping. Worldwide shipping. Worldwide with code JJD20. Now, we just got a bunch of gifts. So, Bo, Hold on. Uh, if you show, you're showing the Platinum Package 4.0. Yeah, yep. yeah. So, we've gotten, we had the the 4.0. We got the 4.0. We, we got, got the, the 4.0, not the, the Platinum Package 4.0. We got the 4.0 the, package. We got. It was a performance package, I believe. That was the performance, performance package. package, yes. 4.0. Yep. Right. Now we've gotten the rest of the items to round out this package, and then we got something else we'll we'll go over at the end. 
You regular people don't get this, but we got T-shirts. Just so. <laughs> you regular. Yes, people. we also got T-shirts right here. Yeah, you manscaped on. Holler. So let's uh, let's do kind of like a quick unboxing here. So commoners, go ahead and, uh, Man, and I'll let it. you read it's, off. It's, what game, the... it's game over in El Baño at home. Yeah. What well, as far as? Shh. Look at this. The space. Look, oh. at, look at this. Look at all this cool stuff I got now. I got yeah. a I got a two in one shampoo conditioner. You feel heavy. Off, I'll, I'll give them the, you get more shit to take care of. Anybody? I live up. You know, my yeah. house is like split level. You know what I'm saying? I sleep upstairs. Anybody breaks into my house, they're going to catch that one in the dome. That thing's heavy. You got more shit got? to take care of your balls now than your wife no, this does body to take care of whole body. hair. This is all the skin that's surrounded. This is shampoo that skin. and conditioner. Yeah. This is body wash. Body wash. Daily shower gel. I don't reach French. Okay. Reach French. Yeah. Gel de douche. Yeah, the douche. Ooh. Or douche. Ooh. Less yours. Ooh. Yeah. Gel de ducha de diario. Those are like, like people who wear... Uh, right there? Affliction t-shirts, right? I love it. A douche. I use body wash. No. Uh, <laughs> what did you I, say? I, I said you. those are dudes who wear affliction t-shirts, right? Oh. Is that how you say it in French? Yeah. <laughs> douche. <laughs> um, there, goes, there goes that demographic. Uh, <laughs> hydrating body spray, lightweight, and quick drying. Very cool. Holler. It's like a, I'm sure it's aerosol free. Lightweight and quick drying. <laughs> Very cool. Nice. Zero oh, residue. What is that? Deodorant. Deodorant? Deodorant. <laughs> Shout out to Tony, bro. I love you, man. That smells like now my whole body can smell like my balls. Deodorant. This is the Very deodorant. Cool. That's the deodorant. Yeah. That's for your nuts? No, dude, it's for your own. These, oh. This is like full body care right no, now. No, we this have the rest of the man's This is so crop preserver yeah. and the crop reviver. Mm -hmm. We have for the. The jewels. Again, aluminum free, vegan. Oh, so this is for the free, rest of the body. Dye free and cruelty free. Very cool. This is to Even to the people. The the ro the rotorant. De de rotorant. Very cool. De Thank rotorant. you guys. Thank so you, now, Manscaped. a cruelty free. Now, when we put them in that headlock, you know, they'd be like, <laughs> I don't like this. I'm a tap, but it smells nice, you know? <laughs> uh, lip balm. Balm those lips. Dude, that's. That's right. That's the smell oh, I would put if I'm going to go out there. and just like. Yeah. Three? Lip balm. We don't and, know if you, we don't so you, know. You, they sent us. That's a cool smell. It's free of everything. That's a so cool. So we're all, Bo, you're going to get to test this stuff out as well. That's a cool smell. That's what the so, crapper server smells like, man. You're going to have to take a shower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. The bad news. Come on, bro, man. You're going to have to take a shower. <laughs> hey, eyes up here. Your eyes up here, baby. <laughs> eyes up here. So a, a three pack? Check that out. Yeah, but look how they packaged it. So it's like the perfect symbol, yeah, actually, that way. We were talking about that last yeah. thing on one of the episodes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it balls, heart. Three pack? All of it. Yeah, yeah it's also a three pack. It's a three way symbol, too. Also, uh, yeah, yeah, we all know what's up. It's all, right. it's also, you know. Oops. Those are the underoos, but these are the new underoos, right? New yeah, what underoos. Else you got there? Yeah, no. okay. I'm open one while you're doing that. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm okay. blowing you off. We got. <laughs> There's an underoos. So we got the ultra, the Look ultra smooth package. Wait, hold them up again. These hold are them yours. up again. Hold them up again. These are yours, Bo. Oh, I love gold. What are those? Really tiny, small. Mm, yeah, Is that the one with the small bag medium. in the front. Medium. Yeah, extra small. Extra, extra small, small in the front. Good. Just in the crotch. These are yours, Bo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is your size. Uh, what Mine are like I said, extra, extra small in the front, just yeah. in the crotch. Just Mine are yeah. almost girls under it. It's I got, I got really so, big thighs. So, but let's show. So we also have my nuts are so small. These are the uh, the ultra <laughs> the ultra smooth package. That means it'll last longer for you. All the product. Mine are ultra less. smooth so now, anyway. Mine yeah. are like two pimples. Are you able to open that? Yeah, I'm able to okay. open it. I was just so wanted to show is, the packaging. Uh, so we also received the ultra smooth package. It comes with awesome instructions. Yeah, uh, crop exfoliator. You know what I'm saying? You got to you got to clear those pores out. Uh, you got clear groin shaving gel, right? I'm sure that's uh, step uh, three over there. And then step four, they give you uh, the little razor type. For those who yeah, want my, to get a close shave. My lady has something very similar oh. to this, and I'm going to have her test it because it's like, essentially almost the same type of design. So let's see how it compares. What is this? Oh, dude, that feels good already. I felt hers. The one she <laughs> uses, like, dog... Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. Bam! Wait, that's a razor. Yeah, it's, it's so you get closer feel. Para aquí, para allá. Well, I know what you want to get a, a skin shave. I know what. Yeah, it very is. cool. Para aquí, para hey, aquí. thank you. Uh, and there's a bunch of uh, extra razors. Yeah, in there, right? five I counted. Replacement plus okay. the one that's on here, so that's six. Thank you, Manscaped. Manscaped. We're gonna try Holy all this stuff out. Smokes. We'll report back oh, over the coming weeks. By the way, I just used the 4.0. 
head to toe. Yeah. Gotcha. Trimmed your hair. You trimmed your hair. Like, you trimmed your own hair. hair. Trimmed my own hair. Face. Yeah. Yeah. You, you went. And you went as everything. low as you can go. You went skin again. It went skin and again, which leaves a little stubble, right? It just yeah. a little bit. Looks good. It actually, looks what cool. order? Like what order did so you go? So a few. That, this was over the weekend. So, so Sunday. What yeah. was it? So. Um, Where'd you start? Where'd but you I, I also went full body, and I used the the guard, the little trim guard for mm-hmm. downstairs gotcha. for off-road? off-roading. Off-road, yes. off-road. And you put dude, the it on. works fucking great. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I'm, I'm about to. Every dude, I I used I'm to. I'm about to. I went for front. A... I went front and back because it was like hell down there. I used to. I used to I burn it off back, before Manscape. And it. It, it was easy though. It was easy. That's what I liked about it. The guard slid easy. It wasn't. I don't know. Did, the credit you know, card. Like, it, it, kind, stays, <laughs> it stays locked in. Yeah, that's the test. It stays locked. In. I, I do love. Listen, I love everything really about good. it. And my card's been getting declined less and less. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Again, thank you to Manscaped. Get twenty percent off and free shipping with code JJD twenty at manscaped.com. That's twenty percent off and free shipping. Cheap. Worldwide shipping. Mr. Worldwide. At manscaped.com. Use code JJD20. It's time you enjoyed the finer things in life and get yourself a platinum package for your platinum package. Let's go. I hope they <laughs> secretly are trying to get Mike platinum. You know, that UFC. That's oh, no. Oh, well, he's probably a good fit for them. He's the platinum package, baby. All right, guys. Let's get back to the show. Woohoo. So let, let's try to, like, bust a myth here. And, and I think you, you would be the right person to do this is, you know, people calling leg locks, ankle locks, knee bars, like for a while that was the new jujitsu. That was like the American style of jujitsu that people added that stuff later. But there's old video of people doing ankle locks. And that is a myth that that wasn't already part of jujitsu or Gracie jujitsu. Yeah, absolutely. And we weren't doing to the extent but just like the moves that have been, I mean, innovative that, I mean, just different kinds of, I mean, I, I went into the, uh, to Grace University uh, just a few days ago, um, I think Monday of this week. And I went in just, I was in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd drop in. I brought my gear just in case. Oh, well, he had on Gracie was teaching and I didn't, uh, I came in with jeans and a t-shirt. And then Hiram was there, so I walked out to my car and I grabbed my, you know, shirt and my gi pants, and uh, you know, and Hiram says, "Richard, where's your stuff?" You know, so, and then because I'm friends enough with him, I mean, the class was probably at least fifty to sixty guys. Wow. So when I'm in the class, you know, and there's another black belt teaching with Hiram. You know, I was fortunate enough to spend about 20 minutes out of that hour, you know, hit on came up and showed me things, but just the details of escaping the rear naked choke, just the stuff that I've never seen before. Like I, I just the way that I do the triangle now from what Horian showed me to what hit on showed me back in 2010. I mean, everything has changed so much, just like the legs. I and mean, we were doing foot locks. We were doing. You know, when did the new thing with leg locks start to come in? Like two years ago, uh, like mm. super mainstream. Uh, I would give it. I would I give it five, but say two maybe five years ago, yeah. where it was okay, just like yeah, this we was doing... a thing, and and then again, people were talking about it like, like if it was, it was new. Oh, wow, look what I've just discovered. It, yeah, it was almost given that impression, like they were like, like they forgot they about the first. Hours. They were the first adopters of uh, or early adopters of of leg locks, and again, then it goes back to that stuff was already here. We may have forgotten about it. Maybe you didn't learn it, but it was it existed. And they weren't watching yeah. the UFC because they were doing. I mean, we did foot locks, and you know, we started doing heel hooks. Matter, I, matter of fact, I started teaching heel hooks maybe the end of the '90s or early 2000s, and I kind of stopped doing it because remember, I was in a Krav Maga school, and I don't teach in a regular jujitsu school anymore. I did at one time. But one of the things is when you teach guys that aren't in a school and they learn something, they may have come from schools, they spent some time with me, but male ego is male ego. And especially when they're beginning. And 
when I started teaching this, within three months, I had three guys out on crutches mm. from doing heel hooks. And I told them, I said, guys, no more heel hooks. I said, if you want to set it, if you feel you have it, but then let it go. Because if the person, it's a straight foot lock is one thing. But when you're a beginning student and you think, oh, I can twist out of this, I can do this. And I said, the next thing, oh, you tweaked your knee. I said, it's not worth it. So we were doing this stuff. And that's why in competition, they won't, I don't know when they start to let foot locks or like yield. two years ago. Right. Yeah, brown, uh, at Brown Belt. Brown, okay, yeah. Brown Belt in competition so, just started two years ago in IBJJF competition. Okay, where you can at least have some kind of control. You can, yeah, you can do heel hooks. No gi heel, no gi heel hooks, hooks at brown and, and above. Yeah. Right. And, and not even, ma- right, not master. What is it? I'm not sure about the master's division. Like it's adult. just, it's brown, it's, it's brown adult, and black. I don't know if it, like master's and executive. If you're brown or black. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that they don't allow it. It's I don't know. It's like adult. the reverse, I, I the reverse know. kids. Well, go ahead. Competition. Professor. One of the other things that, that I've noticed too, that, that they, I mean, like I was telling my class last night, I said, when, back when I did, you know, when the, the in-house competitions, when we were still in the garage, you know, there was only a handful of us. There was slamming. I mean, you could be in someone's guard. And if you lifted them up, they better let go of the guard or they're, you know, they're getting popped on their back. And and you're taught. I mean, that's the way Horian said, look, if, if you have a guy in his guard and he's bigger and stronger, it lifts you up, uncrush your legs. Mm-hmm. And now they've changed the rules because, I mean, we, we've all seen it when the guy all of a sudden will be down the ground and he starts to climb up and hold on to the guy. And I'm going like, oh, my gosh, you do this in a fight on the concrete or even on grass where it's hard. Or it's over. Or what happened to Marcelo Garcia when he went when he won. Uh, what was it like heavy? He went. And it was an absolute division, and he got on that big guy's back. I forgot his name. He's also very popular, yeah. and he jumped straight Rico, back. Rico Rodriguez. Yeah, yeah. That that's what happens in real life. Yeah. But Marcel right. is an animal. <laughs> so when I when I see how they adapt the rules, I understand something like that. But you know, the rules have changed. And, and, but I saw something that was I found really disturbing. And these guys had to be white belts. And one guy got in another guy's guard. And the guy in the top, who's in the guard, reaches over with a rape choke. Those are black right? belts. Pardon me? Those were black belts. It was an IBJJF no gi competition. Yeah. And they were doing it the closest, the mat was really where they were. They were really close to the table, and the ref was right behind them. I think so. Anyways, yeah. the guy got choked out from a rape choke. Yeah, it was a that was a that was a fight sports uh, black belt, and I believe like uh, I believe uh, uh, Patagos. I, I know you're talking about. Yeah, that. yeah. But whatever. If anyone is in a competition who does not know how to defend, if someone extends their arms in your guard, and then the and then the captions start to read, well, they need to adapt the rules so the guy can't choke him out from there. I'm like, what? Yeah. The, the guy who's teacher. If and, and, would, and they were black belts. I know what you're saying now. I know the video. They wear black belts. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, put it this way. If it's the same video, I, then they work totally. I would not want to be there. You know, I wouldn't <laughs> want them to say, oh, yeah, Richard Bresser taught me. That. <laughs> yeah. I mean, their teacher should be, you know, I feel like my parents saying this, ashamed of themselves yeah. for kind of saying like, what? You, you, it, at least... You put your arm up in between their arm, chokes over. Or how about grabbing, twisting, going for an arm lock? I mean, it's like, even if you can't get the arm lock, your arm goes up. I mean, it was, it, sorry, I got a little upset. It's okay. We got but, it. But the comments are saying we need to adapt the rules. Um, I'm like, what? This yeah. is how, what's happening in jujitsu that really disturbs me. Yeah. Because it's turning into a, a la la sport, like I said. Well, it's a sport. Well, yeah, I mean, I, but I think that there's, I believe that there's enough room for everybody. 
I yeah, believe I'm that. Not, I'm not saying yeah, it's no, not, but but look, the guy no. that I that I told you about that contacted me, we've had conversations. And he's still helping me out. And then one of the things that he wrote for, for my, my site and captioned by me saying, yes, I love this sport called jujitsu. And I contacted him. I said, do not call jujitsu a sport. Call it what it is with a sportive aspect. But jujitsu, the way I learned it, Horan didn't say, hey, man, you want to come and learn this really cool sport? It was a self-defense. It was a martial art with a sportive aspect. And, and just that people are calling it a sport now, it's, it's diluting it. So I'm, I'm a little touchy. And I, like I said, I'm not here to say don't compete. Yeah. I, I, I was, I was yeah. going to say, I, I do believe that there's, this is something that's evolving. I think this is probably the longest run that any martial art has had in its popularity, right? You didn't, you know, what other, other than karate, karate. but it's and not, ta- not taekwondo. mainstream. Like none of those are like so mainstream in America, you know, in yeah, in the, at least in the U S right. Where yeah. it, it, and we're in jujitsu, but look, jujitsu is such a huge part of the UFC and the UFC has gotten so big, you know, people know what jujitsu is. I do think that there's room for everybody. I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying. I, I I agree with everything that you're saying, but because it's evolving, that we have to make room for that. Like there's, there's going to be that sports side. There's money. That's there's why. you know people are always going to try to make money. There is going to be that sports side, and we have to. I I feel like I have to be okay with that. Then again, there's the you know the, the when I say the sports side, I'm thinking a little bit more of like the tournament systems, right? We're, yeah. That's that's going to be one place. Then there's the MMA side, right? You need this to, you know, be able to step in that cage and and actually have a fighting chance. And then there is the what I consider myself is more, I'm the hobbyist. I'm looking for the self defense aspects of this. Yeah, I'm not and the so therapy, concerned and the about and effects, and, and, yeah. and I and I'm a huge I'm a huge fan of those other things. Not let, not so much the tournament side, like more like the televised tournament stuff, like the fight to wins, the the uh, the, the who's super, number ones the and like fights. super fights, things like that. Like I love I love watching that stuff. I love the UFC. That's where this all really began for me. You know, watching boxing and then watching you know being introduced to the UFC, yep. and me going, I want to learn that part on the ground. I I really want to learn that. I can go in my garage and hit a punching bag. And again, I'm not looking to get into fights. So I'm just looking for that self defense and the exercise for me. And then I found jujitsu. So I love that part. Yeah. I love the hobbyist self-defense side. That's what I consider myself. But I think that there's room for those other sides. And I enjoy those other sides as well. Yeah. But I do agree, again, 100%. You know, I have not been taught a lot of self-defense jujitsu. I think That's you what have. I'm there for. I, no. I ha- I, in, my first, in my first gym, I did. And I'm in a, I'm in a, a, a sports jujitsu gym. You know, yeah. we, we don't do a ton of like start here and, you know, we start with a choke and you know, yeah. it's, it's usually you know, that. a good move of the day. And then, you know, we're rolling and I love it. I'm a brown belt. I love it. Yeah. If I want those other aspects, I know that I have to seek them out, either yeah. ask my coach or find that in another place. Um, you know, kind of like even with the leg lock stuff, I, I just, know where to go. I got it. I talked to Drew when I, <laughs> Hey, how do you do this? <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to put words in your mouth and you let me know if you agree. I feel like what you were saying was after after like seasoned blue belt a no matter what you're in if you're no matter what sort of sport jujitsu MMA real combat situation where your life is being threatened if there is a simple basic maneuver that stops that move from submitting you whether it be in real life or in a fight for points you should the basics should take over. If you're doing something fancy and now you're getting rape choked and somebody's in your guard, the fancy thing should stop and the basic jujitsu yeah. should take over. And then you could go back to fancy jujitsu because the way you train is the way you fight. Yeah. Which so if there's a earlier. distinct delineation. Yeah, I agree. And I agree with what you were saying, Milton. I don't have, like I said, I'm not a big fan of the UFC anymore. And I'll tell you why. When I see where the it's just like it's just like turns into a boxing match, and I see the amount of damage that these guys are taking, 
and girls. I mean, I just, what did I see the fight with uh, John and John the, the Asian girl and, and um, Wei, Wei Li. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and Jay check. No, not, Iwana. yeah. John, yes. John Jay 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 the boogeyman. Yeah. And I saw her face, her head after she, you know, I mean, the one where just, she looked like an alien. Yeah. Yeah. The, the that big, was, the yeah, that was a couple years ago. They just rematched the other day. And she got yeah. taken out with like a spinning elbow, right? She got- uh, yeah. And it was a spinning back fist. Yeah. Yeah. So she well, lost to her you know, again, but. But even still, I, I, I've seen the other fighting too. And I've seen what, what, they, what they're doing. And I don't want to just see a boxing match to go in there. Cause I don't really enjoy boxing personally. So when I just see where the, the people are just, I mean, like that one embarrassing women's fight that happened a couple months ago. Where they just stood in shadow, but yeah, Rhodes. Oh, Rhodes. You know. Yeah, but that also happened Rose with Derek. Unis. What about Derek Lewis and Francis and Ganu? That was supposed to be like a. You know, well, there's a few of them that, you know, that are so. You know, Corian used to say to me, he said, "If you're the best at what you do, put it on the line. Go in and put it on the line. Big deal. If you if if you're not if you if you." Not supposed to win that day, so you lose. But you at least put it on the line. And that's one of the things that we he did in the early days. You know, it just said, you know what? He says, Richard, I don't care how big they are, I don't care what they know, just bring them. Let's let's do it. And then even before I even knew what I was doing, he said, Look, you're this is what you're gonna do. And I'm like, What? You know, he pretty much knew I wasn't gonna get hurt, especially back then, because they didn't know who got it. And, and let's let's clarify for those who don't know, you're talking about the Gracie challenges, right? Where you invited people in for the most part. And you might go to other gyms, but went to their both school. Ways? you go to their school. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> and and you would challenge their How did that work? Was that like a, was that like a peaceful you. thing always, or was it always like was there tension when you would do something like that? <laughs> well, it would turn into tension because, you know, one of the things that would happen is you know, Horing would always first say, well, you know, I just want to share what, what jujitsu is. And then the guy would, you know, how can you show my knockout kick if you're a striker or a kicker you can't. without knocking somebody out? So Horing would say, look, what that is is very nice, but what would happen if you were on your back? And the guy would, you know, always say, you know, the striker would always say, well, that'll never happen to me. Oof. And, you know, you don't say that, you know, because Horian's not going to say, oh, okay, fine. You know, he'd say, no, I don't, I think it will happen to you. You know, and this, we're talking about early on, we're talking about like early eighties when, when this kind of stuff happened. Got it. And eventually guy would go down to the ground and, you know, they freak out a little bit and, you know, so. <laughs> I like how you just glossed over that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> did, did, I, I know that you probably answered this and we talked about it on the last episode, uh, when, the last time you were on. Did you guys ever lose a Gracie challenge? No. Never. Oh. Right. Never. Yeah. Wow. You know, and, and I, you know, so when you're, when you're seeing this on a regular basis, this is one of the reasons why I developed confidence because I, I saw what Hoyne was doing. And then when he went and saw Benny Arquita is back in early eighties. And, and Benny said, well, you know, I think it's not jujitsu. I think it's you. And then, and, you know, and I had maybe less than a year of jujitsu and he says, no. And, and, and I got my blue belt in six months too, because I was doing private classes. So, and then I stayed a blue belt for six years, Oof. but Anyway, so Horian said, no, it, that's not true. It's not me. It's the art. Richard, go put your gi on. And I was not expecting to do anything. <laughs> and I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> what? what? Man, you got you got tossed into the lions then, huh? And, and he just, and I walk up to him, I go, Horian, we didn't talk about this or, you know. And he says, well, you know. <laughs> and he says, put your hands up. And when I say go, just do a beeline for him. You know, so he said, go. And I charged and pulled him down. and. And they stopped it because once it went down to the ground, the guy was kind of like, you know, fish out of water headlights. Right. And so, and then, you know, like I said, in different schools and in judo schools and in other 
what they called American jujitsu back then. You know, it was all, even the guys, when we went to a judo school and I, and I heard, um, gosh, I forgot who it was. Someone talking about one of the, when we went to a judo school, because I hear lately the past few years, people comparing judo and jujitsu. Oh, it's judo that they do. Well, if what we're doing is judo, then all the other judo that we went to, they must have lost what they they didn't get the same judo that we were getting. Yeah. Because when we go into a school, you know, and I see Horian go through these other guys like they were white belts. It's the beginning. And then and then when I was a blue belt going through some of the people that I went through and they put a black belt up against me. And the guy took me down. He mounted. The guy had 40 or 50 pounds on me, tried to neck crank me, couldn't submit me. Here's a black belt who has weight on me that can't submit me. And I'm down in the bottom and the guy's trying to neck crank me. I'm defending enough. And I whisper in his ear and I said, look, you might, I might not be able to escape, but you'll never tap me out. And the guy went crazy, you know, and finally after another 30 seconds, 45 seconds, where I said, okay, you know, let it go. And, and I felt good. I felt bad that I didn't escape, but I felt good that this was a black belt and he didn't tap me out. And that's when Jean LaBelle walked up to me and asked me if I wanted to roll. And I went, no, I said, but I pointed to Hori and I said, that guy over there will roll. With you. <laughs> and he went a different direction. So the things, because I've seen the YouTube videos that Hori and talks about, and they said, oh, that was, that's BS. And Gene was older. Yeah. Well, if Gene was older, why the hell did he come to me and ask me who, and Gene had 70 or 80 pounds and he, and he, and I kept hearing the things that the people who knew him and he kind of liked to hurt people. You know, I'm not dissing him. This is what I heard. And I didn't want to be one of those guys because, like I said, I was 150 pounds <laughs> and I was a, you know, a mediocre blue belt at best. I know the feeling. So to answer your question about the challenges, we never really had problems with the Gracie challenges. What's the craziest jujitsu challenge story that you have? Is there anything that really stands out as a like, oh yeah, this was, we got a little nervous on this one walking into this gym <laughs> or anything. Uh, but like who was the closest? Yeah. No, like no. man, Muay Thai is way harder to deal with than judo. <laughs> no, no. I mean like, you know what? I, I'm sure you've got some stories. Well, you know, I think when, when Jason DeLucia, before Hoist and him fought in the UFC, he came to the Academy and Jason, like that guy, you know, he, he was a scrapper. And there was one time, I mean, he got in Hoist's guard, and he, and if he would have connected with the punch, it would have been over. But you know, Hoist kind of kept him in control and and finished it. So that was probably one of the the closest things we've seen. But this was after we were in the academy. This was back in in the early nineties. Damn, that so came. the early the the stuff from the eighties. There was nothing that was you know, that was close. Yeah. Wow. I like so, it. So, Professor, let's go back for those. Let's maybe do a quick kind of recap for those people that are meeting you here on the podcast for the first time. Let's tell them just a little bit about how you got started with Horian and let's kind of maybe end at the book and then we'll get into some listener questions. Okay, great. Okay. So how I got started? Yeah, well, tell you know how tell tell everybody the story of how you met Horian and and kind of your journey with him. And again, you know, we'll go right through to the to the book. I'll let you have the floor. It was the summer of 1979, and where I was an unhappy camper, you know, doing drugs, going through life, you know, just flipping hamburgers and and my and and the family business. And I happened to have a, an extra waterbed mattress, you know, one, because I bought a mattress and then I got a set. It's not like I was collecting waterbed mattresses <laughs> thinking maybe some jujitsu master will buy this. Um, anyways, I put it on, 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 in the recycler, which was a, 
an ads, you know, for which like would, a magazine, like a, pr- a printed magazine. Yeah, that's right. A printed, printed, yeah. ma- printed magazines we had back then. Yeah, kids. <laughs> it was Craigslist. <laughs> And yeah, it was, it was the Craigslist. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was the analog Craigslist. Craigslist, Craigslist of the it. day. Yeah. <laughs> so Horian's roommate answered, called my my phone, left a message. Um. So when he left the number, I called Horian, picked up the phone. I told him I had a mattress, and he said that was my roommate. And he said he just bought one. And I was like, I said I was about to hang up, and he said, but I'm looking for one. So he. You know, I said, well, I live in the marina. He came down. Long story short, I gave him a super deal on the mattress plus three sets of sheets in the package. Um, as as he's walking out the door, he says, have you ever done any martial arts? And that's when I said, you know, I boxed for a few months, you know, just enough when I knew how to put my hands up and duck, <laughs> you know, but. And then he tells me about his family, that they're champions in Brazil and, you know, and the whole story. And I'm, and I'm telling you, the first thing I thought was, yeah, sure you are. You know, it's like, why should I believe you? I mean, it's like, you know, so he did, we did this thing called jujitsu and I'm like, okay. And, uh, he says, why don't you come by for a free class? And I swear, I just thought that I was going to stand across the room and sit there and go, ha, you know, I mean, it's like I, I had no idea what to expect. What everybody thinks. That's, and people I, still think that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and I went in and, and you know, just w- it was great. He had a gi for me. We went to the garage, you know, did a couple stand up, went down to the ground, asked me to escape. And I was couldn't escape, obviously. And uh and then I, after that, it was just like, okay, I need to learn this. It, just from the way that it was taught. You know, yeah. the thing that I always had in my mind is that be, because of movies, is that you go into the studio. And even, even the Karate Kid and Cobra Kai now, when they go in there, you know, they, the, the instructor, at least on the other guys, they demand respect from their students you know they treat them a certain way like they're almost like they're scum yeah. where horian was different he said look he said we're not going to come in here and demand respect we're going to show you respect how can you not give the respect back to somebody who respects you it's a two-way street that's right yeah. so i i respected him just because he who he was but it was more of a fear thing it's like you know, I kind of, but even still, the more he respect me, that guy's got good taste, man. I, you know, he, he, he's seeing me for who I really am anyways. So I, I signed up to classes and, you know, next thing I know, a year later, I'm saying to him, I got to get away from these roommates that are doing drugs. We got a house, you know, rented a house. I lived in, you know, our garage was was the garage that's known. That's the garage that people talk about on Hermosa Beach and Third Street. And then helped them with the academy and invest in the UFC. And and now here we are today. So the so truly, so, so tell everybody the name of the book is, once again, we said it before, but Worth Defending. Yeah. Worth Defending. How, G- how, Claire. how Gracie G- Jiu-Jitsu saved my life. No, Abe. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. so truly, so truly, if you hadn't found jujitsu, do you, you think you probably wouldn't be with us? You'd, you would have still been that kid doing the drugs and flipping hamburgers. You know what? If I was still alive, I mean, I wanted to get out of the business that I was in just because I hated the fast food business. I mean, I was in it from ten years old. And I, I, it wasn't anything that I could grow. I wanted to connect with people and you couldn't really connect because you'd have a customer for like two minutes because it's fast food. They come up, they do their order next, next here. I knew I was supposed to be in the service business and now I get to spend time with the person, helping them, guiding them, serving them, giving them what they need. So I, I knew that I was destined for that. Well, at least looking back now, I, I knew that I was destined for it. But jujitsu really saved my life because it helped me. It, it 
gave me something that feeds my soul. So, you know, I think every fan, I, I believe that people either love, you you know, it's, those black, of us it, are trained. it's, it's a, one of the very few black and white subjects, black and white. You either yeah, love it or you hate, hate it. it. You're either going to yeah. do it. This is not a, a martial art that you can just, Oh, like going and to the, the gym. The, I'll let me. I'll go ride the the the, uh, the bike in the gym for an hour, once a yeah. week or once a month. And we've all heard this is not stories. that. This is not that that art. You're not gonna. You're not gonna just be a casual jujitsu practitioner until you get maybe get higher in your belt rank, yeah. and then you know, or you're getting older. Like like and me, I, and I, I train less, but that just doesn't exist for the. You know, again, you're not. It's you love it or you hate it. It's hard to quantify, but from doing interviews like this and then just also us, how many crazy stories we've heard of people that are just like, oh, I went to this gym and they did it this way. And you're like, what? Yeah. You know, and it wasn't conducive to them. So it's like, it's even hard to tell how many of the people who don't like jujitsu is because they got introduced, you know, or they had a bad experience. He, he or, kind of, oh, yep. Oh, oh. oh, sorry. No, he's still there though, right? Oh, yeah. there what happened? Thank you to DD214 Fightwear, gear for patriotic rollers. Visit their website, dd214bjj.com, and get 15% off your online order with code JJD. And check them out on Instagram at dd214 underscore fightwear. Thank you to Feito IT and AV, specializing in commercial and residential automation, security cameras, CCTV, POS, and more. Check them out at feitoitav.com or call 305 428 Two five one five, and let them know the dummy sent you. Thank you to Neutral Zone CBD, a combat family-owned company that supports athletes and the people who love them. Neutral Zone strives to deliver clean CBD products for sports recovery in gummies, lotions, balms, roll-ons, and more. After a competition, a hard rolling session, or a tough day on the job, Neutral Zone has a product designed to help you reduce inflammation, increase cell rejuvenation, and may even help with aging joints. Visit NeutralZoneCBD.com and get 25% off your order with code JJD. And follow them on Instagram, too, at MyNeutralZone. Jiu-Jitsu's favorite monthly subscription box has now joined the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies podcast. The BJJ box is delivered to your door filled with premium jiu-jitsu and grappling apparel, equipment, supplements, supplies, snacks, and more. The crew at the BJJ box find the best in the world of jiu-jitsu and guarantee every box to be worth more than the cost. Each box includes four to seven items you're going to love. Visit the BJJbox.com and use code JJD10 to get $10 off your very first box. And give them a follow on Instagram at the BJJ Box. All of us here at the Jiu-Jitsu Dummies would like to thank the entire crew over at Flow and Roll for their tremendous support. They're renowned for their incredible t-shirt designs and they've got something for everyone. Flow and Roll quickly rose up to become the premier custom apparel provider for academies, big or small, throughout the United States. Shoot them an email about your custom order, flowenroll at gmail.com, and they'll be more than happy to get you hooked up. Check them out on Instagram at flow underscore n underscore roll for samples of their gi and no gi kits. They conveniently offer flexible payment options too. Head over to flowenroll.com for more details, and while you're there, pick up a Jujitsu Dummy signature tee, now exclusively at flowenroll.com. And remember, you'll get 20% off your online purchase of t-shirts, rash guards, or gis with code JJD. There what happened? Did. No, we knocked the cord. <laughs> I, uh, I hit the computer and it knocked out for, for just yeah. a second. You came back. You didn't submit. No tap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting that last night there, um, I, I one of the students that have been with me for about maybe eight years now. And remember, I don't have a, I, I don't teach in a, a jujitsu school. It, the, the school teaches, you know, Krav Maga, it teach, it has boxing, it has, you know, a couple of the things. And we have jujitsu twice a week. And, and, it, and when I was at Krav Maga, you know, we had jujitsu there. I taught maybe four or five times a week. And it was this one guy that was been with me. He's a mid thirties, very solid blue belt, very relaxed. You can tell that he was ta taught by me because just of the way that he does his jujitsu, very defensive, protects himself, doesn't get aggressive. 
his girlfriend used to come and watch the class on occasion. We'd say, you know, you should really, and she's a tiny little thing. She's probably five, two, five, one, a hundred pounds. We say, you should just come in and take a class with it. Oh yeah, someday, someday I will. And this was like five years ago for whatever reason. And every time I saw her, she'd come and watch the fights with us or whatever. You know, she goes, yeah, I'm going to come in someday. Well, that someday happened about two months ago. She came in and she took a class. And I thought, well, and then after the end of the class, she goes, okay, I took a class. Like, stop bugging me now. And next week she showed up again. And I'm going like, wow. She goes, okay, I did two classes. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to pressure you. Starts coming back. Starts coming back. She tells her boyfriend, she goes, let's get some mats. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> so she, he, and he sounds tells like me, a white belt. <laughs> he goes, yeah. And, and all of a sudden I, she was doing a move with me last night, two months. And I'm going like, Oh my God. I texted him last night after class. I go, your girlfriend, she's going to get really good. She's like, She's just really into it. So yeah. if you have the right environment and the right teacher, and that's the thing of people who are getting into it, go check out the class. If you don't think it's for you, go someplace else. Yeah. But There's a place I mean, that's going to deliver on the jujitsu that you're looking for. You know, yeah, you don't know. Tell my Zumba yeah. jujitsu gyms open up. What's that? Tell my Zumba jujitsu oh, yeah. gyms open up. <laughs> We won't. I don't know if we should get into that. I know it's a joke. Let's let's get into some listener questions, Professor. Okay. Okay. Good idea. So this is interesting. All right. So I'm going to read the uh, the handle first. K K H I eight oh eight eight oh eight. That's Hawaii. K K Hi. Uh, Are there any reasons for why Gracie Jiu Jitsu is not as effective in MMA as it once was? And is there anything that you believe can improve the effectiveness of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu in MMA? <laughs> First of all, it's just as effective as it was. The problem is everybody's doing it. Yeah. And everyone knows what to do. We, we know what we're looking for. And, and the, like I said, the guys are getting more and more conditioned. So even that guy at the top of his game, they match you up with somebody at the top of their game. And remember, these are, these are the guys going to the top. So yeah, it's still as effective, but in MMA, That's a big point. it's there. Yeah. The guy who's winning in ground and pound is still doing jujitsu. According to me. So the guy on the bottom that can't get out is because the guy on top. So in, in, like uh, like ground and pound jujitsu for MMA specifically, they love half guard. You'll rarely see them pass to side control because they could control their hips with their hips while delivering blows, right? So it's almost like a pseudo mount to them. Yeah. And to me, I see that as jujitsu with strikes, just like how they would do the green mat battles. Well, that's the three parts, right? That's the jujitsu yeah. for MMA. That's that side. I'll say, I'll, uh, but I agree with him. I'm saying he's like. It's it's two top of the heap top tier guys that know all the moves, all the defenses. It's the one that makes the least amount of mistakes, which is high level jujitsu at its prime, is the one who's gonna lose. I mean he's gonna win. Yeah. And and also a lot of what I've seen in jujitsu for competitions, jujitsu competitions and MMA, our guys are working mostly on their attacks and not their defenses. It reminds me of the early days in jujitsu when a lot of guys used to get caught in a guillotine and they would get their neck caught and they would like flail instead of at least grabbing the, the, the arm. So now when they're getting caught, they're not focusing on how do you get out of this move? Address the Some problem. Of them are. Address the problem. <laughs> it's because, a big problem. And, I, and Hiran was saying, you know, when, when he fought uh, Andre Galval and Metamorris a few years back, you know, Andre was saying, oh, come back and do my rules. And he said, look, I don't have to do your rules. So you, so you pass my guard, big deal. So you get points. So you mount, big deal. 
the whole thing was submission. And Hiran showed that it was hard to submit him. And remember, he just was playing the first 10 minutes. So he is a defense expert and saying that, you know, and he, and he works the defenses. That's what we did this week. But not enough guys focus on that because they're focusing on attacking. And here I'm with him saying, look, if I tried to fight your game with all the attacks, that's when you you open yourself up to get submitted. So maybe that a little more defensive, because if you're in, if you're with somebody who does ground and pound, you have to develop a good defensive guard. So, and I'm only speculating. Frames, baby. I'm going to say that, you know, not necessarily answering this question exactly. Maybe I'm, I'm giving more of my opinion about, you know, the new for UFC. MMA is the art. I know mixed martial arts. I understand what it means. But MMA, if you want to fight, that's it's like you're going to a gym that usually you're going to a gym that's going to give you all of those things or you're traveling around to different gyms. The fighters in that cage now are starting out as kids, teenagers, learning, going to a wrestling class in the morning, going to jiu-jitsu class in the afternoon and a striking class in the evening or Monday, Wednesday, you know, Friday. Yeah. Right. They're yeah. doing all of those things. That was not the case in the beginning. Um, right. That wasn't the case for, for some fighters, right? You know, they still say, you know, uh, you know, Muay Thai fighter fighting out of whatever. He specializes. You know, right. He's a, he specializes. And there's some that, you know, that, you know, even though they've been training jujitsu, that jujitsu just isn't at the same level as somebody who from the beginning was training again, one day jujitsu, one day stand up, one day, you know, wrestling, one day boxing, one day Muay Thai. Yeah. That is the new, if you want to be in the ring, Jack of all trades, that is the art is MMA is the art. And that means that you have to learn all of those aspects. And there are so many of those fighters. So somebody that just comes in and can Gracie Jiu Jitsu or is a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, fighter and is maybe a black belt that didn't train as much in hands. Yeah. His, he's maybe not going to be as effective all around. And I think that's what sometimes people look at. They're like, Oh, you know, Oh, jujitsu isn't as effective. Well, no, he probably just doesn't have hands. He doesn't, uh, he used to pulling guard. He doesn't have a good shot. He doesn't have a good throw. And that other guy is not a well rounded That fighter. other guy is well rounded in all of those things and he can't get off his game. So, again, MMA is like, is the art. What do you study for to, to become an MMA fighter? The art of MMA, which that art consists of all of the other arts, anything that you could possibly get your hands on, it's including jujitsu, boxing, Muay Thai, right? So, wrestling is a big I mean, one. That, that's why I think, it, you know, from the outside looking in, that's how it's changed, at least the outside of of the UFC and, and the cage. On the outside looking in, I, I mean, that's what I see as a fan. For sure. Does that make sense? Easy. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have next question. S.P. Flannery. Do you know who Sean that is? <laughs> yes. Uh, mm -hmm. For those that don't know, Sean Patrick Flannery, that he is from... Most notably, I think, from the Boondock Saints. Yeah. And if anybody watches the boys on Prime, uh, he's just he's in this last season. I think, yeah, I watched, the, really great. I watched the first season. Yeah. I haven't got the, into ep, it uh, season. I think it's season three. I think it's around episode five or six. I think I've only seen the they first season. They introduced him really, as a I'm superhero. Getting close to, I'm getting close to episode five. I'm going to have to pay uh, attention. Yeah, yeah. All oh, right. yeah. Did, did, did you not know he was in there? I did not know. Yeah, he's. Uh, yeah, oh. he's. It, it. It was good. I no spoilers. I, I, I can't. I no can't spoilers. say anything more because I'll spoil it. Well, we started. Uh, we just started following each other. He didn't reach out and tell me, so I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Well, he 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 asked some questions here. So we've got three different questions here. Let's see. Um, what was your mission statement when you started jujitsu back in the '70s, and how has it changed through the years? You know. <laughs> I didn't have a mission statement when I started back in, you know, 1979. I just wanted to learn something to defend myself. Well, there it is. That's the mission statement. Right. And, and because of how it was, how Horian put it to me, it's just that to, because one of the things that he used to say over and over again, jujitsu is the most effective art. So I just went, okay, I want to learn the most effective art because I want to be ready in the street. Mm -hmm. So that was, I, I guess that was my, my mission statement. Okay. 
what is the most valuable thing? Again, this is from, from Sean. What is the most valuable thing that jujitsu has given you? Um, gosh. I'm almost going to say your life. Cause right. You said you wouldn't, you wouldn't be here. My, the <laughs> friendships meaning for my life because being able to share this art with others and the friends that have, that have, especially because of my book now, the people that have reached out, by the way, I just got a message. I'm getting about maybe anywhere from three to five a week. Someone just reached, Hello, I'm a student jujitsu. I just finished your book. Thank you very much for writing. Hey. Uh, these are things over and over that I'm getting. Trash. So those kind of things and the ability to help. I mean, I just went up to Washington to visit my mom about three weeks ago or so. And while I was there, I happened, a guy who read the book is a chiropractor in, in the Seattle area. I said, Hey, Richard, would you like to teach a seminar when you're up here? So giving, having people who want me to come show them what I've learned, what a gift. Yeah. That's yeah. like that, probably one of the most rewarding things that jujitsu has given me. It's priceless. Yeah. yeah. Again, I go back to that. I hope that I'm in that position one day. I do love teaching jujitsu. I do. You're giving back again, right now. And, and, and again, I'm, I'm not a coach, but I'm just talking about in those small moments when I'm rolling with somebody and I either help them with something, correct something, or they're a beginner and I get to teach them, you know, guard passing and, you know, close guard, open guard. I, those are my favorite days. I will go back home and I won't tell my wife about, submissions that I got. I'll be like, Oh, I got to help out this new kid. We got this new kid in the class. Oh, I was really cool. It was, you know, really fun. I really hope he sticks it out. Like that. I, I get giddy, you know, yeah. you know over don't, those moments. So I, I, I love that. And, and, and look, I, I, I bring it up a lot because I want other people to feel that I want people yeah. to know that that exists like that. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, you may not make a million dollars from doing that, but you're feeding your soul when you're teaching something yeah. to somebody, um, that could potentially save their life or save the life of somebody else, or maybe they're having, you know, mental health issues and they're, they start doing this. They, they, they come back because they felt like, you know, I helped create a friendly environment for whatever reason they come out. I'm not taking credit for my gym by any means, but in that small way, if I can do that, I love, I love that part. I just love that part of jujitsu. Yeah, don't, don't sell yeah. yourself short that you're yeah. not a teacher because that's yeah. what it takes to be a teacher is yeah. that love of teaching. Yeah. Enthusiasm. I, I used to love mm. teaching autocross. I yeah. really enjoyed it and seeing the progress in a student. Yeah, watching it's, somebody do something that you taught. I mean, there's just there's yeah. nothing like that. It's like teaching your kid, you know, to totally. say mama, or dad, dad, yeah. and then they do it. Ah! All that, all that, that, those are wrist locks for me. That's, I, those are the feelings that I get. All right. So, so. And, and, and to answer the second part of Sean's question sure. is the mission state is basically what I just said as far as being able to just share what I have now, to share what was given to me. That's what it's morphed into. That's it, the future of your mission. This state. is my this is my question. Our, and we might have touched on it once or twice in our phone conversations since you've been on the last time. Um, do you have any plans to do another book? Is are there more stories that you feel that you you have to tell you about jujitsu or otherwise? Because I know you do other things. You know what? I the, the guy that I told you about, is, whose name is Tom, the guy that I met who read my book. He said, "Richard, you got to do another book." And I'm going like, yeah, okay, sure. Hard Next. to write a book. Yeah. <laughs> it, I have no plan. People are, saying, well, you know, it was so good and you can elaborate. I, I have no plans, you know, because he said, let's do another book. I said, what's it going to be on? Uh, you know, the, there's most of the stories are there. So, yeah, I, I have no plans. Right now, what I really want to do is that. We have sold how many people do jujitsu in the world? Do you think? I would a I would say fraction. less than I, mean, I would say less than five million. That, that are number. at jujitsu around the whole entire world between yeah. between Europe and America and the Netherlands. Well, that's also Europe. I think like, that's I think that might be a high number. Well, it's over five, a million. Five million? I don't know. That's a very small portion of the pop. That's less okay, than one so, percent of the over, population. Uh, 
Yeah, what, over we'll a million. Over a million. Okay. We have sold I take that a little over 3,000 of these. Maybe I'll start thinking about a second book when we when we hit 100,000. <laughs> yeah. One percent. People have commented on the book about how I how I was, how I was vulnerable, and all this stuff. And I just said, look, I was just basically. If you, we've had conversations, Milton. In other words, I, I wrote the book that you know Scott brought to life the way that I am in a conversation with you. Mm-hmm. I pretty much share who I am or who I was back then and, and how much jujitsu has helped. And also the history with all the people that are doing this, I would like, and there's quite a few people that know me that are black belts that have said, Richard, not enough people know who you are. Not enough people know the history. So I would like, it's not that I have a craving to be known. I want people to know that this started in the U S Basically, Horian came here in 78, but that's what it really started was when I took my first class in 1979. By the way, next month, it's 43 years for me wow. since I started. Oof. So that's my that's my real number one goal. As Right now, we've hit a little over 3,000. My next goal, I want to be 10. And then from there, you know, I, I want more people. I'd like to do seminars and and expose people to the jujitsu that I learned. Do you have an audio, do you have an audio book version of it? Yes. All there right. is an audio. Did There's you read it? Pardon me? Did you read it? No, I didn't. Ah, you got a good voice. You should read it. Thank you. You know, I was told that, but you know, I'm a good speaker, but when it comes to, if I just sat down and started reading, like uh, the two skittered across the mat, and into the cage wall, then onto the cage door, which swung open. The referee stopped. I mean, for me to do this, I, yeah. I'd be stopping and start. <laughs> phone would ring. Oh, crap. You know, it, it takes, Scott did a good job with that. Maybe eventually I might do it. I might even go on YouTube and read a chapter now yeah. and then. But, you know, thank you. You know, it'd be dope. Me? I said, you know, it'd be dope. If you get to like that ten thousand, and now you have like a new robust following, maybe do like, uh, like an extended version where the other person still uh, reads the book, but you have blurps like add-ons to those stories. I was thinking about that. Yeah, I with, was with your voice. Can I say? Oh, yeah. you I, could have. I have read the book. Walk in. Yeah. yeah, read the book for you. Yeah, that's paper, bro. It could I, be. I read the book <laughs> before we spoke on on the last podcast. This is the truth. That I had not read a, another book cover to cover, I don't think since I was a kid. I, I can't remember any other book. I, I've started books and put them down. Goosebumps. Um, even wow. <laughs> even in high school, <laughs> I never finished one of the assigned books. You pick it up, you, know? you put it down. Yeah, kind of read it, <laughs> it, skip chapters. I, every night, almost every night, sat and I would just tried to read a few pages a little bit before we were going to be speaking. And then it came a point where I I could, I was like, I couldn't wait to get to bed. My wife will hate me for saying this. I couldn't wait to get to bed. She even bought me a little light. One of those little, yeah. (laughs) Put around your neck. It had the two lights. She was so happy. She loves to read. And my daughter loves to read. She was just so happy that I was, she like wanted to give me the tools so that I continue to read. That's the last (laughs) I have started that night reading. Um, we did receive another book from, uh, from a guest. I, I've started that book. But I used to read it at the gym. Yeah. And most of the time I'm like posting on social media at the gym. Like I'm just I'm taking that time to post for the podcast. Send me the audio you know, file. So um <laughs> but yeah, but I love the book. I highly recommend it. I am one of those five star reviews. If you if you haven't checked it out, or you haven't read it yet, go check it out. We'll put a link in the description. Yeah. All right. We have one other question from from I should call him Professor Flannery. He is a black belt. Um, okay. Okay. If I placed this is Sean saying, if I placed a suitcase in front of you. With a million dollars of cash inside, would you trade your jujitsu in its entirety for that suitcase? Today or 30 years ago? <laughs> yeah, inflation. Today, man. if I place a suitcase in front of you, $100 million, would you take it? You had to give up everything million. you knew about jujitsu. A hundred million. That's a hundred million. I say a hundred million dollars. Uh, that changes things. Yeah, later. 
<laughs> you know what? I mean, uh, I would. The only way that I would do that, as long as I could get someone some great teaching, and have a hundred million dollars, and then go, okay, like Horan, I want to hire you, and I want you to teach me a class every day. <laughs> but no, I would not trade because who cares? I mean, look, money's great, but without meaning to do what I do, it's like, no. Nah. Yeah. You know, with a hundred million, you can create a whole new sport, <laughs> right? Or actually the same sport, Jiu -Jitsu, but name. call it, call it something it, else completely. We don't call it, we don't want to call it a sport here today. And, and yeah. yeah <laughs> You're yeah, calling Jiu Jitsu a sport. You, know, that's, you, you are not listening to the beginning of the that's podcast. That's the Murphy's Law thing. You know, <laughs> yeah. if, if it's going to go wrong, it will go wrong. If it, or if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. Yeah. Um, Doesn't mean something's going to go wrong. No, with me it does. Yeah, <laughs> it's absolute. All right, no, we have we have one last question. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, no. There, to answer the question, no, I I I wouldn't trade for what I know right now. Yeah, neither would I. Oh, I mean, hundred million. Hundred <laughs> million. Hundred million. I got. No, I, I don't have. I don't have any good Gracie yeah. stories. I don't know. <laughs> I'll just start doing sambo. Could, could you, what, what, you, I do gator brawl. I do gator no, brawl. I'll it's do sambo. New, no man. Br Brazilian gator brawl. <laughs> I, I've been. I have. I've never been a millionaire, but I've had a lot more money than I have now. Yeah. And I truly saw the whole. Money does not buy you happiness. A lot of I didn't success. have millions, but I had a I lot of money. Cool I had a lot of the things that I thought I wanted, and my life it was not as good as it is uh, now. A lot of successful professionals do jujitsu. I've learned yeah. that. Like the majority of the classes are LEOs. Uh, um, would you consider like a firefighter an LEO? I don't know, but anyways, no. like I just want to include responder. them. First responders. First responders are always in there. They're dealing yeah. with people all the time, and and then I. You always run into like executive type people or people that, that do stuff even super professionally, like they're the best at carpentry or the best yeah. at. So I, I feel like, I feel like that, that shine, iron sharpens iron thing is like really real, not only with yeah. training, but also with like carry over into your personal yeah, life. Yeah, exactly. And you learn yeah, the, 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 the friends that I had, I, I could say maybe just a handful of the friends that I had before yeah. I did jujitsu um, are still friends. Uh, acquaintances now yeah. really you know like because of facebook and instagram you keep in touch every one of my good friends or anybody that i respect it, they're all jiu with the exception of Bo, who doesn't do jujitsu yeah yet. <laughs> yet yet you know they're everybody i know yet. anybody that yet. that i <laughs> that i see that i go out for a beer with it's jujitsu it's somehow i know them from jujitsu Common, Junior, common denominator. you, Mauricio, right? You know, Ray, clients. You've you know, only known each other for like three, four years. Yeah, if you think about yeah, it, we're, yeah. I say we're pretty but tight. It's uh, it's given me some of the best friends and the best people that I've ever met in my life. For the most part, I don't. You, you don't meet too many dirtbags in jujitsu because jujitsu weeds those they, guys yeah, out. Yeah, they weed them out real quick. Yeah, or they or they change them. Sometimes yeah. they start off mm -hmm. dirt baggy. I know one or and two. Then <laughs> they get less. Dirt I might have been one of those. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Professor, we have one other question. Uh, the handle is uh, Devoted. Uh, what is your favorite move, sub, and sweep? And what's your favorite thing about jiu-jitsu? Um, my, favorite, my favorite move, I guess, sweep, would be when someone – because I don't – one of the things when I learned jujitsu, we didn't give things a lot of names. Or I would just say, you know, you jump up, you do this, and you, you do the arm lock like this. But there's a move where someone's in your guard and they're driving their weight on top of you and they have their arms on you. And it's a little hip bump. Bring the arm across. I reach over, hold their back, and just pull them straight up and mount on top of them. It's one of the things that I've done for so much. It's my favorite. I love teaching it. A lot of times when I go to do it, I go like, oh, God, they're going to see it again, and they're going to be bored. But I love this so much. And, and I don't teach it very often just because, I, you know, some of the people who know me, that's are like, oh, God. It's like I don't want to have to tell the story. But, <laughs> you know, that that move, because it's so easy to do. It look, it, It's easy, but when I see people try to do it and they struggle, you know, it's like a lot of moves. Once you 
understand the technical side behind it because a lot of times people have problems doing it because the person in their guard is bigger than them and they can't do it. And I'll come over and I'll take that big person and who maybe has 50, 60 pounds on me and I get them in the right position and they sweep. And I just found a way to modify it to make it easier. So, you know, again, that goes back to also the gift of why I like teaching because I, I find little ways to help my own technique as I get older. Yeah. That was and kind of one of the things I was saying before about, about teaching and how I felt like I was better with technical stuff when I was a white belt than even now at Brown. I, that's one of the reasons, you know, that's one of the selfish reasons that I like to teach because it, re, it helps me remember kind of that flow of the, of those basics where my foot's supposed to be by teaching somebody where their foot needs to be. I'm like, Oh yeah, shit. I don't even do that. What am I, I'm, I'm teaching it and I, and I forget to do that. You know, you're caught up in a heavy, you know, a, an aggressive role and now it's muscle and, you know, and I right. forget some of those. It makes me kind of calm down, remember, and it, I think it helps my game. You've been there before. So, yeah. And, well, and my <laughs> favorite sub is, is the triangle. Favorite sub triangle. And oh. one of the reasons why is the way I learned it. The way I do it now is different because I had a class with hit on Gracie about 12 years ago. He called me up. And he said, hey, Richard, now, out of the blue, he calls me. He goes, hey, why don't you come down and take a class with me? And I'm thinking, oh, well, you want me to come down and do a, a group class? He says, no, 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 just come down. And let's do a private. And I'm thinking, well, are things that slow at the academy where you have to solicit, you know? And and Hidon was, you know, charging a few hundred bucks for a half an hour back then. And I went like, you know, and I didn't want to say, like, how much are you going to charge me, Hidon? You know, but I said, I said, look, I know you're expensive. And he goes, Richard, he said, just come down and take the class. And I remember I said, okay, look, but I'm not, I don't want you to give it to me. He said, okay. He says, I'll tell you what, just bring me three avocados. <laughs> so I went down and took a class with him and I videoed it. And back then the way I videoed, remember we, we had these little things that are kind of almost obsolete now called digital cameras. It was digital at least, not VHS. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had, I had a, a, I think it was a Kodak. Oh, nice camera that you know i put on video and we put it on the, on the floor in there and he showed me how he does the triangle how they start to do it in the in the curriculum at the academy and especially how you do it if you're in a situation where someone's throwing punches at you and this is the way that i show the triangle now i don't show it the way that i used to before it has more steps but when I started showing this, people started hitting the triangle more often. So, you know, just doing that triangle and the, the way that he has modified it to make it easier to do, because I don't like it. You know, one of the things I keep telling the students, I says, look, you get stacked up in your 20s. It's like you recover. You get stacked up in your 30s. You recover. You get stacked up in your 40s. You kind of go in like, oh, man, I don't know what to do. You do it in the 50s. You go, you know what? I don't want to do that move anymore. So I started showing this because now that I'm 70, I do not like being stacked up, period. I mean, so I, I show it. I, the way I teach jujitsu now is to show how to avoid injuries if possible. And doing the triangle the way that he showed me is just, it's... It, it's really effective. Love to be like a fly on the wall in that yeah. academy. I think a lot of people. <laughs> well, just I, I'll take the. I'll give you my email. Later. <laughs> Send the video. Yeah. <laughs> just, just share the video. With us. <laughs> All right, Professor. We we've uh, we've done like a, a little bit of a speed round at the uh, at the end of the episodes. I think that I did this with you before. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go down some of these real quick now. Uh, some of these we may have to, I'm going to go down even if we might've touched on something before, but gi or no gi preference. Gi. Gi. Take down or pull guard. Um, pull guard. Okay. Do you watch any jujitsu, any events when you're not training? Are you, you know, somebody who watches some of these events, whether it's IBJJF or 
um, uh, flow grappling and things like that. Do you watch any of that stuff? Not really. Not for you? Yep. That's common. (laughs) Okay. Now, it, it, it's actually more common than people saying, yeah, I love, guests saying, I love it. Uh, it. Some of the higher level people, especially when they compete, they don't watch, maybe watch some competition film on people they might be up against, but they don't sit and watch they're the events. They're, yeah, they're, they'll watch if a friend is training or if it's a card that they want, they'll watch it back. But they're, most people, I think more often than not, we hear that they don't watch. Too busy. Um, so I won't ask the next question. We won't ask you about your favorite competitor. But what is your... Uh, at, now that you're in your 70s, what is your ultimate goal in the world of jiu-jitsu? To just keep sh- sh- spreading the message, spreading the jiu-jitsu that I learned, and, and just keep showing the basics and let people know that jiu-jitsu is for, I, I, I don't know if it's for everyone, but it's for more people that, that think that, you know, I mean, put, just in my own experience, people have come to, because they'll take a class over. I, I teach it here. Hey, Ricky, this is for you. I teach at a place called 360 Self-Defense. It's by LAX. And he teaches, Ricky's a great guy. He's a brown belt and problem guy. He's an excellent stand-up fighter. And people come in and he offers two weeks. So when they come in and they take a class, and then I, you know, they'll do it on a night that I teach and they'll come and they'll go, Hey, you should really take jujitsu. And they kind of, you see the way people are, ah, I don't know about jujitsu. And they come in and take a class and they go, Oh my God, that was so much fun. I want to come back. That I have to keep doing because I want them to know they're not going to get hurt. They're going to learn. And this one, this one girl in particular, she came in, not very confident, had some issues. And I said, look, you know, I have a book out called Worth Defending, Cheap Plug. Anyways, I I was just, I said, you know, check it out. And it gives you that, It'll. I think you might like it. Anyway, she read the book. She went out and bought a gi. It's like, oh, my God, I got to do this. And now she's been like, she loves doing it. She goes, hey, do you do privates? So having that and having like that other girl that I told you and, and some of the other females that have been in class, it's this is something that I want to do. I want to help them be able to defend themselves and, and show them the art that I learned. Yeah. And let's, let's tell everybody too, right? The book isn't just for other jujitsu practitioners, right? This is for anybody thinking about doing jujitsu. This is for people who want to kind of get some, some of the backstory of, of how the UFC started, right? There, there's, there, there are, uh, there's, you know, stories about that. So it's not just for, oh, if you do jujitsu, you should read this. I think anybody could read this book and take something away from it. And and one of the things that, that I was reminded of is that for the first 30 years of my life, because of the grades that I got in school, I walked around thinking that I was stupid because I thought grades on your report card basically dictated your intelligence. So when I was getting D's and fails because I was so ADD, I was just like, in geography, I'd be looking outside and, you know, looking around the room, seeing little pretty girls in class. And, you know, I just, I couldn't focus. So, you know, I, I wouldn't get a good grade. So I thought, well, I was stupid. And then when guys like Horian or someone else would, when I wanted, found things that I like doing, I thought, well, I said, look, Horian, thank you very much. But I don't think I can learn this. And he went, no. He said, you come to class. He said, you'll learn it the way you're supposed to learn. And, and when people would tell me, Richard, you're smart, you're intelligent. I thought, well, you don't have to lie to make me feel good. Like Horian really needs the money that bad. He's telling me, Hey, don't worry about it. Just come to class. So what it did and what I, and, and the people that have, that can relate to it. When I tell stories like that, people have said, wow, man, that's the way I felt. So when you find something that you like and you find a good teacher in it, we're very easy to identify with, like like I said, I am stupid, that yeah. kind of stuff. So to walk around for 30 years thinking that you're stupid doesn't do much for your self-confidence or your self-image. So it, it took me a little while, but finally when I got into my 40s, I kind of remember, and then I, I also got into some really good therapies too. 
that were more fun than anything. I started to realize, go, wow, I like this guy. Talking about myself, I really like who I am now. So a lot of that is because of jujitsu, because of my ability. You know, it, it changed my belief in myself. So, and and I tell that in the book. So it's not just for jujitsu. Jujitsu is a, a big part of it. Anything you would change? Any regrets about your journey? Um, I guess I wish I would have done less drugs. Awesome. You know, it's, okay. you know, and I it, think it, that, that kind of took me to where, you know, I needed to go. But, and maybe if I would have done less, who knows? But I mean, I, I had a couple bad years. And, but other than that, 70s, Santa Monica. It is what it is, dog, man. The dog days. It is what it is. I'll let you hit him with the last question. It was a go. tough environment. All I'm saying is like, did all right. Uh, this is a pretty important question, actually. Do you or do you not wash your jujitsu belt? I remember your first answer. It's for the, for the new listeners. Do I, you I, I, or do you not wash your jujitsu belt? <laughs> uh, I wash it. Yes. Ding, 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 Only ding, for ding, one ding, reason. Ding, ding. For one reason. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> it's because it's so stiff. <laughs> and I wanted to kind of break it down a little bit. And my belt was made by John Awano. So it's kind of like, it's not, my stripes are not taped on. It's kind of like he has, he sews a patch on there. So I don't have to worry about the tape falling off or anything like that. But that's the only reason that I, I wash it just because it's a good quality belt. And I like to break it in a little more. It looks like it's, Look like I've been a, a a black belt longer than I have. It's so <laughs> new, and you know, go, oh, how long have you been a black belt? I don't know, twenty some odd years. All right, <laughs> you wear whatever you but want. But it's a newer belt. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. You got to get a new belt. <laughs> All right, Professor. Uh, do you want to say hello to anybody? Do any shout outs? Mention anybody that we didn't get to talk about during the episode? I'll give you the floor. Um. The guy that the guy that I went up to Washington, who who got me the seminar, who like again, because he read the book and liked it and reached out, and he arranged this seminar for me. It's interesting because the question came. One of the questions came from Sean Patrick Flannery. This guy guy's name. He's a chiropractor. Is Sean Flaherty? Okay, oh, is that <laughs> like the golf guy? From the golf channel. Pardon me. Is that the dentist. guy from the golf channel? <laughs> no, he's a chiropractor in, yeah. in, in Washington yeah. State. He, he helped set it up, and, and you know, and Sean's been a, a good guy. And then, and then there's another guy, Sean Sherman, who's a black belt up in uh, um, San Luis Obispo. And you know, these guys have really they they've been out there to help support me, and not to mention Tom. And I could give a whole list. And again. Mm -hmm. I always like to give thanks to Hori and Gracie. In spite of what people may think about it, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for him. Yes, I helped him out. Yes, I supported him. But it was his dream to come over to the U.S. and spread this wonderful thing while we're all together. So, okay. you know. Good. We'll leave it there. Don't hang up. Don't don't go anywhere. We're going to say goodbye for now, but we're going to come take some pictures with you by the screen so that okay. we have some promo stuff. But I, I really appreciate you reaching out. I really appreciate you coming on again. Thank you. You know, you, you're welcome here anytime. So you Thank just you. let me know next time you want to come that. on again. You know, we, we were recording, I think, twice a month back when we first, uh, we first spoke. I don't know if you know, I left my job to do this more. So we do it for, you know, uh, for a month, once a week. Uh, and then I opened up a little marketing company as well to, you know, just to kind of maintain my income. But, uh, you know, pursuing this dream of of doing the podcast more uh, since we spoke last. So I'm not sure if you knew that. So so we do a lot more. So you're welcome to come on anytime. Great. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, pleasure Professor. Again, don't hang up. Hang on a second. Thank you, though. Okay. Thank you to Neutral Zone CBD, a combat family-owned company that supports athletes and the people who love them.
Neutral Zone strives to deliver clean CBD products for sports recovery in gummies, lotions, balms, roll-ons, and more. After a competition, a hard rolling session, or a tough day on the job, Neutral Zone has a product designed to help you reduce inflammation, increase cell rejuvenation, and may even help with aging joints. Visit NeutralZoneCBD.com and get 25% off your order with code JJD. And follow them on Instagram too at My Neutral Zone. Jiu Jitsu's favorite monthly subscription box has now joined the Jiu Jitsu Dummies podcast. The BJJ box is delivered to your door filled with premium Jiu Jitsu and grappling apparel, equipment, supplements, supplies, snacks, and more. The crew at the BJJ box find the best in the world of Jiu Jitsu and guarantee every box to be worth more than the cost. Each box includes four to seven items you're going to love. Visit the BJJbox.com and use code JJD10 to get $10 off your very first box. And give them a follow on Instagram at the BJJ Box. All of us here at the Jiu Jitsu Dummies would like to thank the entire crew over at Flow and Roll for their tremendous support. They're renowned for their incredible t shirt designs and they've got something for everyone. Flow and Roll quickly rose up to become the premier custom apparel provider for academies, big or small, throughout the United States. Shoot them an email about your custom order, flowenroll at gmail.com, and they'll be more than happy to get you hooked up. Check them out on Instagram at flow underscore n underscore roll for samples of their gi and no gi kits. They conveniently offer flexible payment options too. Head over to flowenroll.com for more details, and while you're there, pick up a Jujitsu Dummy signature tee, now exclusively at flowenroll.com. And remember, you'll get 20% off your online purchase of t-shirts, rash guards, or gis with code JJD. All right, very cool. A lot of knowledge there. Perspective. I always like when he. Yeah, co- when it's he cool. Like I, he was very, very uh, direct about what he meant, but being very careful not to be disrespectful because he knows that there's it's plenty. A, that's a hard. I was going to say respectful. He was very respectful yeah. of the other side, but of very the art. stern about what what he believes. Believe Which, it or not, we have this problem in autocross, the same exact comparison. People call it, some people call it a, a sport. Some people call it a pastime. Some people call it driver development, like an educational <laughs> thing. You know what I mean? Like the way it would be self-defense for jiu-jitsu mm-hmm. as opposed to sport. So I Other totally drivers. get this. I totally yeah. get this. But I, I truly do believe, and and I didn't want to in any way be disrespectful to him, I, I get where he's coming from, and I agree with everything that he said. Yeah. About what he's saying. Yeah. About what he's saying. Yeah. I believe. I believe. Like, don't put any words. Same, don't yeah. put any words in his mouth. It's very. I easy do to believe do that. that we have to make room. As you know, it's like anything. You come become more conservative as you get older. He's always been that way. And what he's saying is that we can't lose the self defense side of martial arts, right. and we're losing it because of like these other applications. Um, and it's because the he's sport, always thought that. I believe that we need to be open to. That MMA side and and the sports side, yeah, it's 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 a fun part of this, and you know, it, it it's, there aren't many the sports teaching. where like you really get to like we get to do that thing that those pros are doing. Like we, get we sign, might be at the same get, on the same map. Yeah, with we somebody could sign that's famous, up. Right? We could go to a competition and be on a, face one of and those face. Guys. Well, I, I mean, if <laughs> I if I stick around with this, I'm the same age as as um what's his name? Look. Why am I blanking his name? He's like, I love Andrew Lowe, you saying Lowe. Yeah, well, I'm the same age as those guys. Yeah. So if I'm a black belt in eight years from now, and they're masters, the same masters division that I am, I could sign up, and if they're doing yeah, that. because once it's black, it's, you know, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter how many stripes. Yeah, exactly. And they're not going to reach Coral by the time I'm black, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and yeah. so it's crazy. that like, There's not a lot of sports where you could, like, play with Michael Jordan, you know, or. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean I do like that side. We're both fans. We like watching the UFC, right? And I know I don't watch as much as I wish I could, just because of who knows. Life. We might feel but, exactly you know, like that at seventy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, remember you know, there's um, you don't remember know, when man. when we when Nick Salas was on, and I was telling him like you know, kind of that we uh, he said the we thought about the same the, the same way, right? We there's there is room. There are people that our message is going to resonate with, and there might be people that it's not, and they're not going to listen to us, and the people that it does it, they are right. And and it's the same thing with his message. There's not there are people one that are going to gravitate to him because of that message that 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 message that he's giving resonates with them, and it does resonate with me. I do wish that I did more 
self defense style jiu jitsu. It's like it's like know? ice cream, man. There's like a ton of different flavors. Yeah. There's different flavors for different people. Let's get to the unboxing of. Can we do the this pre BJJ the pre unboxing before we even unbox? We Go have ahead. to we have to let everybody know that we did some unboxing before the unboxing. Yeah, we were we were bad. We, we got hungry. We weren't bad. We got hungry. Testing the product out. With, uh, okay, yeah, we, no, we didn't weren't hungry. We were testing yeah. product. Come on, man. So go ahead and. Um, so the BJJ box. One of the first things that we got was uh, the pure protein bars, and you had this exclusively. I, I, <laughs> exclusively, yeah. you tried this out. I, I was very hungry at the beginning of the episode. Yeah. I needed some energy, and oh. I thought that that was going to do the trick, and it did. Yep. So it came in handy. How, how did it taste? It was good. It was really good. Yeah. I've had I've had these before. I know they make like a really big bar too, right? They make. Like you buy the individual I'm not too bars. familiar. I'm yeah. not in. The, I'm not in the protein, Pure protein bar game. But where are we at here? Pure protein. In the in this, this month's BJJ box, delicious. This next one, near and dear to my heart, I've spent uh, probably close to thousands of dollars really? on this one product. I used to eat it at Seven Eleven. I'll be your Van and White this time. Bam! Check it out. It's a plant based chocolate chip we cookie. Really did. <laughs> yeah, we really ate it. Yummy. And so, uh, Lenny and Larry's. Yep. Um, it says new taste. I would say the taste is a little bit more subtle than it used to be before. It used to have like more of a proteiny type of taste. Plant based protein. Did yeah. they change the plant based protein? No, 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 no. It, it's it always, always been like that. Like that. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. Juni might yeah. like that one. He should be there reviewing this. <laughs> and and well, um, thank you to Lenny and Larry's. Yep, yep, yep. Those are All good right. cookies, man. I know you could one hundred percent find those at Seven Eleven. What else? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've seen them in the store all the time. Yeah. You know who, I always see them in Walmart. Oh, Walmart. Walmart. The uh, the Walmart supermarket. I've heard of that yeah. store. <laughs> well, you know, down here they have a lot of like. Uh, no, let me let me say, <laughs> duh. But they have a lot of Walmart supermarkets down here that yeah. don't have. A, 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 like oh, it's we not have a Walmart. Super, we have Walmart, not super, super center, center, but we have the Walmart just, there's grocery. A supermarket. They're like a Publix, yeah. but it's a Walmart. So that thing, I've seen them there. You know. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. So you got that shirt? I got the well, same shirt. Got this, uh, shirt. Just small mart. Yep. Right. But it's the same. Six minute rounds. Jiu-Jitsu soap after. I guess I think they did this. This is a collab, right? It says there Damn. in the card that they sent. Okay. Microphone. Yeah. Mic. Oh, I'm, not, I'm, not, <laughs> a, I'm not talking. There's a collab with Jiu-Jitsu soap. Yep. Right? Um, I'm looking for it. Oh, six-minute rounds collab with Jiu-Jitsu soap company. Uh, it's a $25 value. That's a... Mm-hmm. Oof. Nice. It, you know what? Does it feel good? I mean, you've been wearing it. I got... Dim- yeah, yeah. It's like really soft. And- yeah. I actually, I also went with an XL, uh, excuse me, a double XL. Ooh, I'll even buy a couple myself. Cause, not because of here, because of here. Yeah, the guns. Get, <laughs> the the <laughs> muscles. No, when I, I'm not going to get, sounds like it's I'm right. <laughs> My My, my, my shirts are, are not fitting me this way. <laughs> and I the got shoulders. you. I got you. I'm having the same problem, but with the pants. <laughs> and it's, and, you know? <laughs> it's like the. <laughs> it's got it. <laughs> I need, I need yeah. some more shoulder room, feel, so. Yeah, yeah you need. Well, My wife says it's this, but I say it's the shoulders. Hey, the BAJ box apparently believes in six minute rounds. Okay. What about ten minute competition rounds? Black right, belt. What else we got? Let's see what we got here, dude. How much have you talked about this on the show? No, well, this I talked about the this, spiky ball. No, well, what you said, said things for this part. One. Yeah, just give me it's one. It's the the roller fitness. Oh, oh this is uh, you know it's, it's for the like plantar fasciitis. Um, you know, easy to use self massage rollers, decrease tension. tension, improve alignment. Oh. You have alignment issues in your hip. Maybe I have well, I, I have issues everywhere. Just you have alignment Moonwalk issues across. in your spirit. We've already eaten half the box, so <laughs> yeah. Take one home. What one these things are? Thirteen bucks. Excuse me. Yeah, that's twenty six dollars. Twenty six dollars. Oh, he was. Uh, I think right. He put two in there for us. I think. I thought it was one for each foot. You thought it was one for each foot. I think it might be one for uh, <laughs> one for each for person. each uh, dummy. Yeah. One for each person. Them uh, them straight foot locks. <laughs> Coming at you. Uh, Vive or Vive bamboo ankle support, bamboo charcoal compression. Charcoal is good for order control. Smell right. Yeah, yeah. Temperature regulating, antimicrobial fibers, machine washable. Let me see. We get, we get, we do foot locks in the gi over at my uh, neck of the woods. I'll see. Uh, sometimes my ankle that. hurts. Yeah. That's yours. You get. I'll let you, you know, my wife a has a, a janky ankle. I'll give it to her. Yeah. Yeah. It, it might be too big for her. I think it's an XL. Is it? A uh, large and or XL. One pair, large and extra large. For a female Bigfoot. It's like Give a shot. Report yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, I'll see. We got anything else? I'm not going to say my, yeah, we do. I'm not going to say she's got a big foot. <laughs> <laughs> one, one Life doesn't stink. Pair. Raspberry green tea, stink bug. 
aluminum free deodorant. Nice. Can I keep this one? Let, let Go for it. Dale. Nice. My wife actually just bought me a new deodorant. Deodorant. That's a shout out to my I've boy, been, uh, Anthony Bulger. I've been Williams. experimenting with some other stuff. Oh, dude, we got more. I must. Oh. I must. What do we got here? Ooh, monkey tape. Recovery balm. Smells good. I, like I think I think he's sending two because it's two of us, maybe for both yeah. of us to recover. Sorry, Bo. Yeah. Talking. Well, he needs to do he stuff to, that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You don't roll. All right. How many grips did you break this week? Monkey tape uh, recovery bomb. Not. Yeah, man. Yeah. There you go. I like it. Very cool. I like how it looks. I Me mean, like it. I like gifts. Yeah, I know. Cool. Got it. Thank you so much. So and, yeah, check uh, them out at thebjjbox.com. Ten dollars off your first order with code JJD10. Yes, there you go. That's You're right. Good at this. And check them out on Instagram at the Duh. BJJ box or Dutch BJJ box. Depends. <laughs> is it data or is it data? Data. It's the same. Da okay. da. All right, guys. Thank you everybody for for tuning in. You can check me out at Uncle Milty BJJ or at Jujitsu Dummies. That's right. Uh, on Jujitsu Dummies, you can click the link in the bio for all the ways to watch, listen, and support. JJD underscore DJJ sixty nine. Said it so fast. People Bo, know, bro. Where can people find you? At B A D W E R K S. Bad works. Bad works. Uh-huh. No trabajo. Very cool. Again, thank you for watching and listening, everybody. <laughs> Peace, love, jujitsu. Take it easy, everybody.